Centis was attacked at the branch in Tavistock Street on Friday night between 10 to 10 and 11.15. 38-year-old Mazed Jandrezic of no fixed address has been remanded in custody to appear before magistrates today. A group of MPs has published a report following the Rotherham scandal which says child protection systems must be reviewed following evidence that organised abuse is widespread in England. The Communities and Local Government Committee criticises Ofsted for failing to expose abuse in the town. A woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. Janet Bowles from Great Hormead near Buntingford says that by the time paramedics arrived her son had lost consciousness. We waited um, over an hour on a 999 call and then we made either two or three calls, further calls, 999. Bedfordshire Police have released details of an attack on a pregnant girl who was pulled to the ground and kicked in the stomach outside her Luton home. Four men attacked the 18-year-old as she was walking home in Rudyard Court on Friday afternoon, October the 31st. A passing motorist took her to a police station. A hospital checkup confirmed her baby was unharmed. A review has found that more than a quarter of sex offences reported to police are not being recorded. The Inspectorate of Constabulary estimates that almost one in five of all crimes is not officially counted. A cull of 6,000 ducks will begin at a poultry farm in East Yorkshire this morning after a case of bird flu was confirmed there. Officials say the risk to public health is very low. Andre Farah from the Bedfordshire-based RSPB says it's important not to jump to conclusions that migrating birds are to blame. Get the facts together and then work out what's happening. Frankly, in the end, it's going to be down to the biosecurity on farms that will get the situation under control. It will be important to know how the the virus has been moved around but this automatic assumption that somehow migrating birds have mysteriously brought In sport, Wickham missed the chance to return to the top of League Two after a 3-1 defeat by Burton at Adams Park. Tonight, it's Scotland versus England in a friendly in Glasgow, the first clash between the two sides in Scotland since 1999. The weather, drier and brighter than of late, with a small risk of isolated showers, a maximum temperature 12 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. Quite a quaint, pretty little town, really. I think it's a little hidden away jewel in the Chilterns, to be honest. Telling everyone about where you live. Bustling, unique, friendly place. All this week, we're exploring Chesham. One of the great things about Chesham is everybody lives close to it, so most people can actually walk into the town. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hi there, nice to be with you. Happy you could stick around. Like to introduce Legs Larry Smith, drums. And Sam Spoons, rhythm pole. And Vern Dudley Bohe Noel, bass guitar. And Neil Innes, piano. Come in, Rodney Slater on the saxophone. With Roger Ruskin Spear on tenor sax. Hi, Vivian Stanchel, trumpet. Big hello to Big John Wayne, xylophone. And Robert Morley, guitar. Billy Butlin, spoons. And looking very relaxed, Adolf Hitler on vibes. Nice. Princess Anne on sousaphone. Introducing Liberace, clarinet. With Donna Ted Armstrong on vocals. Lord Snooty and his pals tap dancing. In the groove with Harold Wilson violin. And Franklin McCormack on harmonica. Over there, Eric Clapton, ukulele. Hi, Eric. On my left, Sir Kenneth Park, bass sax. Great honor, sir. Especially flown in for us, a Sessions Gorilla on Vox Humana. Nice to see Incredible Shrinking Man on Euphonium. Drop out with Peter Scott on Duck Call. Hearing from you later, Casanova on Horn. Yeah, digging General De Gaulle on accordion. Really wild, General. Thank you, sir. Roy Rogers on trigger. 
Tune in Wild Man of Borneo on Pongos. Count Basie Orchestra on Triangle. Thank you. Great to hear the Rawlinsons on trombone. Back from his recent operation, Dan Drop, hot. And representing the flower people, Quasimodo on bells. Wonderful to hear Brainiac on banjo. We welcome Baldunican as himself. Very appealing, Max Jaffa. Mmm, that's nice, Max. What a team, Zebra Kid and Horace Bachelor on percussion. My great favorite and the wonderful performer, all of us here, Jay Arthur Rank on Gong. <laughs> We've not even started yet. But I thought if Wally Webb can end on the shags, we can begin with the bonzos. Morning, guys. Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Justin Daly is made uh, daily. Hang on a second, let me start again. What's that blonde lad's name? Justin Daly, but that's a great name for a feature. Justin Daly has made me a triple cough. I am off my uh, whatevers. Bahookies. My bahookies are in the bazookies. Coming up on the show today, charities are calling for more sex in care homes. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be one of those, I'm afraid. It's a proper story. Boyle's here. Yes. Betts is there. Morning. There we go, you see, guys. And you're there, dear listener, with a phone cradled in your hand waiting to call. What can you call about? Anything you want. 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Now, the former mayor of Milton Keynes, Subhan Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor after vouching for the character of a violent serial rapist. The decision to speak up for the man who was applying for a taxi licence led, led to a huge row over his suitability for public office, with the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Douglas McCall, standing by his man. However, after months of pressure, Mr Shafiq says he's stepping down and will discuss the matter no further. Well, Catherine Boyle's got more information on this. Catherine, what more do we know? Well, the Liberal Democrat, former mayor, Su- Subhan Shafiq, had already resigned but uh, as mayor, but he wrote a resignation letter saying he'd no longer be a councillor. In the letter, he publicly apologises for any distress caused by his actions and says that recent months have put pressure on his family. Oh. The Internal Audit Report takes a forensic look into uh, what Mr Shafiq said about the serial rapist Nadim Kiani. That came out yesterday and it implies the evidence he gave was conflicting. At one point he said he'd known the rapist since childhood in Yorkshire but later on he said that only uh, he, he only knew the uh, man's wider family and only knew Kiani from his time in Milton Keynes. Mr Shafiq also said that he didn't know about the convictions and he only vouched for the rapist, rapist because he was under pressure from his mother. The report notes that at one point Mr Shafiq vouched for another driver and was overheard telling him that he would be OK getting his licence back because he'd spoken for a convicted rapist before and he got his licence. That was a conversation that was overheard in a corridor. Mm. Mr Shafiq denied saying this when asked about it later. The leader of the council, Peter Marlin, said the pressure had been growing on him and uh, whilst the council cannot be held responsible for one individual councillor, he says it's the public's responsibility ultimately. He says that um, it seems finally Mr Shafiq took that responsibility on himself. Peter Marlin, speaking before the resignation yesterday, said the people of Milton Keynes can no longer have any confidence in Subhan Shafiq. You look at the internal audit investigation, I think there are now bigger questions for him to answer. I think that when the audit committee comes to make a judgment on that, they want to know why certain elements of the evidence he gave don't necessarily compute with other bits of evidence he gave. So, but I think, you know, I will hold my judgment on that until the audit committee have properly looked at the evidence. But I do think that those questions for Sapan are growing, and I don't think that it's tenable for the people of, to have confidence in him. Uh, so this internal audit also highlighted new measures for the granting of taxi licences? Yeah, and the key change is that applications will be refused where the applicant remains on the sex offenders register, which means that the serial rapist Nadine Kiani would never have been granted a licence. Well, duh, uh, that seems quite an obvious step. Well there's done. Also, there's also new training for councillors who grant licences. All drivers' badge numbers, details, start and expiry date dates of their licences will be published on a council website. Newly convened regular 
regulatory subcommittee has been formed which grants the licences and 1,300 drivers have been contacted and invited to take part in DBS checks, that's formerly CERB checks. Okay. So far, uh, sorry, two, so far 241 drivers have been assessed so there's a way to go yet. As for the granting of a licence to a serial rapist, the Chief Executive of Milton Keynes Council, Carol Mills, insists that whilst councillors involved followed the policy, they didn't put enough emphasis on public safety. They have in the policy that was available at the time very wide discretion that they can use in coming to that decision and they used all the correct policy and procedure at the time. However, the report concludes that they perhaps spent, uh, they put too much emphasis on the issue of the ability to earn a living rather than the issue of public safety. So what else has the council been doing then? Well, after they dealt with the serial rapist Nadim Ahmed Kiani, who had four convictions for serious sexual offences and went on to work in Milton Keynes for three years, they then took a sample of 100 taxi drivers. Of these, the council has concerns about seven of them, um, though not as serious as Mr Kiani. Four of them are now working... Uh, now not working, sorry, for Milton Keynes Council. Well, now former Mayor Subhan Shafiq is also one of those who's no longer working for Milton Keynes Council and will be later on talking to the chair of the licensing committee, which is the regulatory subcommittee. She's called Katrina Morris. She's the t- And we'll also be speaking to the Tory group leader, Edith Bold, and hopefully the leader of the Lib Dems, Douglas McCall. Uh, uh, we've seen uh, Mr Shafiq's uh, letter of resignation. Basically what he says in it, paraphrasing ever so slightly, but I hope keeping the, the, the emphasis, is he's, doing, he's resigning to protect his family. Mm-hmm. Doesn't... Uh, he apologises for any distress, yep. but then goes on a little bit more about his family. Aren't Doesn't it? acknowledge that he may have done something wrong, that he made a terrible few decisions. It's just he wants to protect his family. He still, and he won't talk to us on this. No, and, and he sort of says at the end of that that letter, that open letter, that this uh, this is the end of the matter as far as he's concerned. Oh right, yeah, because that's how it works. You do something really, really, you know, ridiculous, and uh, what could be perceived as being slightly dodgy, you uh, you grant a, you you give a recommendation for a serial rapist to have a cab license, then you just step down, and then that's the end of the matter, isn't it? That's how that's how it works, isn't it? <laughs> Double five, call in about whatever you want, but we've got some great music coming up. That's all that matters right now. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
Having a look at the speed sensors, there's not any problems at the moment showing up there. On the A1 southbound through St. Neots, there's a lane closed there for roadworks around the Black Cat roundabout. That's not causing any delays at the moment. And in Clapham, on the A6 Paula Radcliffe, where there's a lane closed there as well for roadworks in both directions at the A6 Clapham Road. That's not causing any delays either, but that could get busy later on as we get through the morning rush hour. In Watford, on the Hampstead Road, there's to stop go boards in place at Langley Way, and that could cause some delays later on as well. Checking the train departure boards, there's no rep- delays reported at the moment. Smart Breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. I think we all know what the Paula Radcliffe Way is, don't we? Disgusting. 6.16, it's Tuesday the 18th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes' former mayor, Subhan Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. A man has been charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford. And a woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. BBC Three Counties Radio. Sports, you betcha. Three County Sport isn't just about hearing your team in action. In action. Seals a famous victory here. What drama we've had. It's about the managers. I'll make the most of your openings, and we, we perhaps haven't done that, and, and haven't done it so far this season, if I'm honest. The players. We know we need to be better. We're not being complacent. We'll find a solution that will get us playing how we was last season, how the fans expect us to be playing. And the fans. I'm getting seriously concerned we could end up back where we started. Every day, we bring you latest news on your local team. Wickham Wanderers remain fifth in League Two after a nil-nil draw with Berry. Stevenage lost 3-2 at home against York. Three County Sport, keeping you up to date with Luton, Watford, MK Dons, Stevenage and Wickham every day of the week on BBC Three Counties Radio. Here's a song. Falling in love was the last thing I had on my mind Holding you is a warmth that I thought I could never find
a song, isn't it? We've got another great song in a bit. I know, it's just all good songs this morning, guys. It's, it's kind of got like a 70s rock feel to it, but what's wrong with that? Huh? 08459 455 555 is the telephone number, should you wish to give us a call. Now, back in August, the East of England Ambulance Service was fined £1.5 million for poor response and turnaround. And according to the Bedfordshire mum we spoke to yesterday, it's not got a whole lot better. Rebecca Holder's baby son keeps having seizures, some of which stop him from breathing. She's complained after being left waiting for ambulances, which either turned up late or not at all. Well, Tim Roberts is Unison's re- Regional Organiser for Health. Morning, Tim. Good morning. What's going on? I mean, the Ambulance Trust has, has faced um, some problems which, which date back for years, to be honest. Um, date back to when uh, the previous chief executives had made some really disastrous decisions around uh, what resources they deploy in the, in, in, in the region. They, they, they had the wrong kind of vehicles and they didn't have enough staff. There was, there was bad staff morale and there was a massive retention problem. And Unison, Unison was, was campaigning for years for the, for, the, for the Trust to try and take some concrete steps. And when the new chief exec, and Anthony Marsh came in in January. He's, he's been working with us, and he, 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 it appears that now the the trust has kind of reached the corner. It might not have have have, have, have turned the corner, but it's certainly there. It recognises the problems, and it's put in place some 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 uh, plans to kind of tackle with it. But it's not going to happen overnight. So it can know? see the corner. It's approaching the corner. Is it approaching the corner at speed, or is it slowing down? Oh, it's approaching the corner at speed. So in 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 the last few months, we've seen we've seen the trust and announcing um, a significant recruitment programme, including um, student, student uh, pa- paramedics. Oh. So it's going to employ far more pa- paramedics. It's looking at kind of a development programme for, for its existing staff so they can um, progress to that level. But then, Tim, when it turns this corner, where's it going to find itself? More corners? Well, Crossroads. I mean, ultimately, the tr- I mean, I mean, I mean, staggeringly, actually, the trust is is saying that it's um, it's short of between five hundred, um, uh, five and six hundred frontline staff. Flipping heck! So, I mean, that, that's the, that's the the scale of the problem it's facing at the moment. But it's confident, and we we we've seen the plans that once it tackles, um, uh, gets more staff in. It's also developed a a a, a number of senior roles within the organisation. So so power. Paramedics can get a pay rise um, by taking on clinical leadership roles, mentoring these new students, but while staying as as, as paramedics, not becoming uh, 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 managers. And we and we we we've we've already seen evidence that that, that that's helping both kind of retention mm. and and also um, staff coming. So, so if we, for the last um, four to five years, the trust was hemorrhaging uh, frontline staff going to London Ambulance Service and East Midlands Ambulance Service, and what we're seeing now is, is the opposite, actually. Staff leaving London and coming, coming to coming um, the, the uh, east of England. And finally, Tim, you're, you're confident they can turn this around? It's a tough challenge, um, and, but we, we, are, we think that kind of Anthony Marsh can do this, and we, okay. we will continue to work with him to try to, to make it work. Tim, I appreciate your time. Tim Roberts, uh, Unison's Regional Organiser for Health. Um, after yesterday's story about Rebecca and her son, we did uh, try to get the East of England Ambulance Service on the show today, Catherine. They said they talked to us yesterday. Uh, are they going to come on the show today? What time? Uh, well, they said that they'd give us a response. Oh, and they've sent us a really long statement. Ah. Um, I can I can summarise it for you. Summarise it, please. Okay, this was from um, this is from Anthony Marsh, who your guest there, Tim, was just talking about, who yeah. is the uh, chief exec. Said I'd like to apologise for the delay in getting to Miss Holder and her baby. Okay. The call was originally a one 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 call, which was passed on to us. We coded it as a green call, non life threatening. Yep. We oh. sent two ambulances. This is the, this is about the baby that was was lifeless. This had, had, had to perform CPR. He had fits and was lifeless. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 And it was out of the blue. She'd never experienced it before. Oh, okay. Green call, non life threatening. We sent two ambulances, both of which had to be diverted to other patients. One to a child who'd fallen over and sustained an injury. Okay. And one to someone who is experiencing some chest pains, amongst other symptoms. Ah. The recruitment of hundreds of new staff, which is underway, will further increase ambulance cover and improve our response to patients. I mean, the rest of the, <laughs> uh, the uh, statement is pretty much about what they're doing to improve service. So they're not coming on the show? Mm, no. Okay. Interesting, Thank- though, the, the non life threatening element of that. You've got a baby there that's limp and lifeless. 
what would be great would be able to talk to them about this because you know we're, we're getting the, the story from the mum obviously which which may be slightly biased we don't know and we're getting a statement from them that we can't question so you know you, I, I, my natural way of thinking is be, be inclined to believe the mum because I can't question the East of England Ambulance Service so that's how it works you see guys if we have dialogue then you can put forward a more persuasive point of view Ah, well, at least the Daily Express have found another cure for dementia. It's not a cure, it's a prevention. Oh, what do we do? Not cut, get old. Cut calories, isn't it? Oh. Sticking to a low-calorie diet from middle age... May? So, is it going to be May next? No, 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 no. Is oh. the key to living a long and healthy life, experts say. It not only slows the ageing process, ah, but can ah. stave off a host of diseases, including cancer... And dementia. A study suggests that men who normally eat 2,500 calories a day should cut back to 2,000. Women used to 2,000 should cut back to whatever. I don't understand the calorie numbers. I thought 2,000 was the maximum for a man anyway. Researcher Dr Stephen Ginsberg told the Daily... Ex- <laughs> Research, then you, then you get, it took to, to get to paragraph four before we got into the world of fantasy. Researcher uh, and dreamer Dr Stephen Ginsberg told the Daily Express that his exciting breakthrough could even lead to a daily pill, which would mimic the effects of a low-calorie diet ah. when combined with exercise and generally healthy living regime. Let's read that again. His exciting breakthrough could even lead to a daily pill which would mimic the effects of a low-calorie diet when combined with exercise and the general healthy living regime. Yeah, and also, I might grow wings out of my butt and start flying to space. The Jetsons. Yeah, we go, ladies and gentlemen. The researchers say that calorie-reduced diets cut the number of... Turn to page 7 if you want to read more of this bullshine. You going to do it, then? Yeah, of course. Why not? I don't want to get dementia. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Checking the cameras at the moment, it's looking quite quiet across the county. In High Wycombe on the A40 Oxford Road, there's a lane closed there in both directions around Temple Street, so that could cause some delays to your journey around there this afternoon. And in Chalfoint St Peter on the A413, there's gas mains works happening at Joyner's Lane, so that could cause some delays too. In Roxton, there's the ongoing roadworks to the Black Cat roundabout on the A1 Great North Road. Expect some delays later on if you're travelling through there. We've got no reports of any problems so far on the trains either. Samantha Breath, BBC Three County. Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 6.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Milton Keynes' former mayor, Subban Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. A man's been charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford on Friday night. He will appear in court this morning. A woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. And Bedfordshire police have released details of an attack on a pregnant girl who was pulled to the ground and kicked in the stomach outside her Luton home. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Wickham missed the chance to return to the top of League Two after a 3-1 defeat by fellow promotion hopefuls Burton at Adams Park. Paul Hayes scored for the Wanderers from the penalty spot. His manager, Gareth Ainsworth. We didn't defend well. We, uh, we were unrecognisable sometimes. Uh, you know, the way we defended, we didn't get the ball down and play the way we have been doing. Um, but And it's all coming one night. We, uh, we lost three players as well and... You know, I make a substitute on 81 minutes thinking I'm safe and Alfie has to go off on 82. It's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, yeah. it's just all gone against us tonight. But we didn't stop fighting. We fought to the, to the right to the end. And the result means Luton stay top of League Two. The Hatters go to Burton on Saturday. And in Conference South last night, St Albans lost 3-2 at home to Farnborough. Tonight it's Scotland versus England in a friendly at Celtic Park in Glasgow. The first clash between the two sides in Scotland since 1999. England manager Roy Hodgson says they'll relish the occasion. We know what the atmosphere is going to be like. We welcome it. We embrace it. You know, congratulations to Scotland for having a, a stadium which gives them that type of atmosphere and which obviously helps them enormously in their games. We're more than happy to come here and play and experience it and we'll try and and do our best on the field to quieten the crowd down. 
The chairman of the Football Association, Greg Dyke, has written to FIFA's top executives demanding a report into alleged World Cup corruption is published in full. And in darts, the world's top players are heading to Milton Keynes in the new year with the Masters tournament moving to the arena at Stadium MK. The likes of Phil Taylor and reigning world champion Michael Van Gerwen will be in Milton Keynes on Saturday, January the 31st and Sunday, February the 1st for the televised event. BBC Three Counties News and Sports, the next full bulletin is at 7. I don't know who you're told. 
Giza, 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 Giza. Why is it disturbing to see a man in a monkey onesie? Having a gecko on your head for me is just wrong. No matter how excited I try to sound, my voice always sounds boring. That's just my voice. That, my friends, is the sound of a peacock. I oiled up and I got naked. Morning, guys. This is uh, Ian Lee. And that was The Who. And this is Kev. Good morning, Kev. Good morning, Ian. You're that was, you're that was absolutely brilliant. Wasn't it just? I wrote it myself. Yeah, the babies and then the who. I mean, what's going on this morning? I'm in charge of the music, fella. That's what's going on. I I've think had you've a been tri- taking lessons. I've had a triple cup of coffee made by my colleague and uh, erstwhile um, uh, uh, knight of the round table, if you know what I mean, Justin Dealey. And I'll be honest, Kev, I am off my face. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's I am good. as high as I was uh, ten years and one month ago. But without the tears. That'll come probably about five minutes past nine, I reckon, you think, Kev? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came downstairs all swanky in a coffee. Yep. And I said to Simon Oxley, you just wait for the dried up husk that man comes back up at nine o'clock. That baby song is brilliant, isn't it? It was. Kev, you're through, yeah. to, you, you're through to... It's like we're on a, a delay and you're in Los Angeles in the 1980s. You're through to Catherine Boyle. What would you like to ask her? I would like to ask her, what happened with the... Um, with the presenter that was going to be waking up Eastern Europe. Uh, oh, yeah. Remember you that. had the app? Yeah. yeah, we had the app. It was rubbish. It just kept phoning people and phoning people. We couldn't hear them on the other side of it. I don't know whether I was actually doing a good deed that morning or ringing up random people who couldn't understand a word I was saying. It just felt fruitless, Kev. So I think maybe if we do it again, we just branch out on our own and just do it randomly. Yeah, because, I mean, we've got enough Eastern Europeans in Northamptonshire, if you remember the story from last week. Yeah, we could phone up, uh, we could phone up uh, random Eastern Europeans here. Yes. But what, what would you say to them? Uh, wake up. Morning. Yep. Hiya. How about... Here we go. Slivki. Slivki. Stavai. What, does, what the hell does that mean? Everyone's panicking here, Kev. Stand up plums. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Oh dear. I know that you can say that to someone without having at least bought them a drink. So the kind of music um, that you like tells us mm. what political party you like to put an X by when you go to the voting booth and vote for the parties. Who I vote for. I don't know who, who, you, vote, who you vote for, I don't know. Well... So, if you like... OK, let's see if you can guess who, which party you'd be putting your X by if you liked... Elton th- John. Well, no, that, I can't be that specific. OK. OK, if you like um, hot gossip... <laughs> <laughs> hot gossip? Yeah. Are they, they're, not an, they're not... It's in the list. They were dance tree, weren't well, they? Well, it says you'd listen to hot gossip. Oh. Who would you be voting for if you liked hot gossip? Um, probably. Let's think. Who's more hot gossipish? Uh, Cameron. Uh, uh. Kelly, you, I know you don't know any political leaders, but pretend you do. Yeah. If you listened to hot gossip, although they're a dance troupe, who would you be voting for, mate? Nigel Farage. That's what I would have said, but wrong, incorrect. Nicholas Cleggington. No. Oh. Yep. No. Yep. 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 no. I'm going by the mail. OK. You like... John Lennon. Who are you going to vote for? Oh, that's left. That's Labour. Girls? Yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. OK, all right, OK, OK. You like the Carpenters? Yeah. Who are you going to vote for? Tories. Cameron. It could be Cameron or it could be Farage. They both... Farage. What? Hmm? They both like the Carpenters. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, oh, blimey. OK. Cliff Richard splits the, splits the vote again. Oh yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, UKIP and uh, Cameron. This is the problem you see with UKIP. They're splitting the musical vote. This is going to be awful when it comes to X Factor. They should call themselves Euclid. <laughs> 
well. It's, Go on, you like that. Give us a smile. Yeah, Give us a smile, you I'm not going to smile at that, mate. He gets upset if you it's say a joke. I know, but he'll he do it in about really five minutes. He'll do it in five right, minutes. Well, okay. no, first of all, I don't get upset if Catherine does a joke. I've never heard her do one. <gasps> just did one then. And oh, second of all, I just don't think she's taking what is actually science seriously. <laughs> OK, go on. OK. Professor. Um, they could call themselves Euclid. Call you you clip around the ear in a minute. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Not as good as Cass. Okay. Um, so, if you like mushroom stroganoff, mm. who would you be voting for? Well, stroganoff. It sounds Russian, so you'd you could stroganoff. You'd, you'd be a pinko. I think that's uh, that's la- that's labour. Yeah, you're right. You don't even know what that is, do you? What labour? Yeah. Yeah, it's what women go into it. Oh, for labor. goodness sakes! Keep it above the belt today, guys. Okay, you admire. Krishnan Guru Murthy. Who could admire, admire Krishnan Guru Oh, I used Murthy? to really fancy Krishnan Guru Murthy. What? Yeah, when he used to do news round. Like, you are hot. Ha- you are having a laugh. No, I thought he was a hottie. Krishnan Guru mm. Murthy? Mm, yeah, I went out with a Spanish lad. It called, uh, what was his name? Krishnan like Guru him. Murthy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah, he's called Isco, I remember. And he looked like Krishnan Guru Murthy. Never heard he was of him. hot to trot. Well, Kath um, is getting excited in the Dunstables, <laughs> by thinking of uh, KGM, as I like to call him. Go on. What? What? If we, what? Oh, well, this isn't working. If is you it? admire Krishna Guru Murthy, Labour. Next. Yeah, all right. OK. This is just nonsense. I, um... Let no, me do one. It's not, Let me do one. No, it's Let not. Let me do one. It's not. Let me do one. No, Let me do one. No. Let me do one. No. Oh, go on. It's not nonsense, because what I've decided is that uh, Nigel Farage should uh, call his party Euclid. And then when he sees Cliff Richard, he go, ah, uh, excuse me, you, Cliff, go to Barbados. Don't want you here. Go, Cliff. Cliff was born in India, wasn't he? I believe that to be the case. Catherine, your turn. See if you can do it. See if you can do it better than that. With more than two million users, it was only a matter of time before electronic cigarettes became a smoking hot topic. Yeah, it's, uh, vaping is the new word. Yes, it it's is. It's the most used word of the world, including the. No, it's not that. It's been named Word of the Year by the Oxford word English the Dictionary year. or the OED. I know. I've seen that story. Stop doing this. Just because I read the papers before I go to bed at night. How can you do that? Papers don't come out until the morning. Online, isn't it? Is it? Yes. Well, that's what you say. And you don't like it because I know stuff before you do. That's what you say. It's just I do my homework. I think Nigel Farage Shira- should call you Kip you Cliff. I think Nigel Farage should call you Cliff you Kip. Out. And when he sees Cliff Richard, rivals for he the title. Say, hey. Of Word of the Year. You right, you Cliff. Oi. That's not about. Hello. Rivals for the title of Word of the Year include. How can there be a Word of the Year? Listen. Surely the Word of the Year is year. You're going to like this because you practice a word. it. You, sl- you you practice this one. Selfies. Slacktivism. I'll give you a slaptivism. I'll slaptivate you in a minute. <laughs> Supporting a cause via the internet and contactless, referring to the Hang new on. car payment system. Supporting a cause by the internet. Well, that's not a word. Slaptivism. I'll slaptivate you in a minute. No, not slap. Slack. What the listener doesn't know uh, is that every time I'm saying something funny, I'm turning to Kelly, giving her a uh, wink. He's giving me a wink, yeah. yep. While I shake my head and roll my eyeballs. Oh, no, is she? Previous winners were Selfie, Omni Shambles and Big Society. There we go. That's, uh, that's the papers done. I'm going to slap debate you in a minute. Stop winking at me. You're not even funny. What? Huh? Exactly. Who? Don't talk to me. Don't speak you to kid. Catherine like that. Respect her I age. I do. Kid. Respect this. Oh, Bill Cosby. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Stevenage, looking at the speed sensors, and it's looking quite slow around the A1M southbound and around the Junction 7 for Stevenage, and on the M1 southbound, it's looking quite heavy at Junction 10 for the Luton Airport Spur Road on the speed sensors. Having a look in Bricketwood and the A405 North Elbert Road, it's looking quite heavy around the M25 Junction 21A roundabouts, and also looking at the M25 anticlockwise, it's building up between Junction 21 for the M1 and 20 for Kings Langley. Elsewhere, on the A413 in Chelfpoint St Peter, it's moving well around there at the moment but there are the roadworks in place at the high streets where it meets Joyner's Lane and in High Wycom on the A40 Oxford Road there's a lane closed there in both directions at Temple Street so expect some delays there as it starts to get busier on the roads this morning. There's no reports of any problems at the moment on the trains though. Samantha Braff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thanks very much. You right, Boyley? 
Yeah. What's going on? Nothing. OK. 6.46, it's Tuesday the 18th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes' former mayor, Subhan Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. A man's been charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford. And a woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. Coming up, I know, why don't we get Justin Dealey on the line, but before that, here's the weather with Kate. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. Quite a cloudy day right the way across. We could see one or two showers just work their way through as well. Not particularly heavy by the time they reach us. Shouldn't be too many though. And we'll get some breaks in the cloud, the cloud this afternoon. So we should get some sunny spells. The temperature's struggling though. We have an easterly breeze. It's just struggling up to around 11 Celsius. Overnight tonight, still one or two showers. But should remain dry for most places bit of a clear spell and a low cloud. Maybe one or two areas of mist and fog likely to develop higher ground especially, so up on the North Downs and also out towards the Chilterns. But the minimum temperature around 5 Celsius. We're still hanging on to a little bit of a breeze. Now through tomorrow one or two brighter or sunny spells. Showers tomorrow afternoon. Maximum temperature similar at 11 Celsius. And that's your forecast. iPlayer leaves on the line and... Overrunning engineering works. iPlayer being told... Your call is important to us. For the 50th time. iPlayer being kept awake by the local wildlife's nighttime activities. For the third time this week. And iPlayer taking ticket number 93, just as you hear... Team number seven, come to the counter, please. BBC iPlayer, BBC Radio and TV, always there when you need it. Celebrities accused of using BBC's children in need to promote their music and tour dates. They wouldn't do that. What, what, what do you mean accused? Of course, that's how it works. They do it for nothing, don't they? Of course. They are, of course, there to help raise money for charity. But some of the stars of this year's Children in Need have been accused of also using it as a convenient opportunity to raise their own profiles, says the Daily Mail having a pop at the BBC. Viewer, viewers have criticised a string of singers for shamelessly promoting their albums and tour dates during the BBC One for... Uh, but, this is the most. This is the second most made-up story I've ever read in a newspaper. The other one was in that rag about me. But this, it featured performances by One Direction, mm. Cheryl, Catherine Jenkins, and S Club Seven, all of whom have new singles, albums, or tours to promote. Well, yeah. why would Children in Need want to put on some old act that's not selling any records anymore? The only time I would agree with this being a bad thing was at the Olympics when George Michael did his new single. Yeah, and he should have. He, he should have got Andrew Ridgely back, and they should have done a Wham medley. Bit of Baby, I'm Your Man. Should have done a Wham medley, right? But 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 children in need. Yeah, that's how it works. You scratch on my back, I I, I scratch on your back. This is nonsense. Well, children in need and every other program. Why do you think Taylor Swift goes and sits next to Graham Norton? Mrs. Fernandez Vassini, thirty-one, performed her new single "Only Human," while One Direction performed "Night Changes," released that very evening. One Twitter user wrote: "One Direction using children in need as a shameless plug for their new single." Hashtag shame on. You well no well that well, I, that, but, that, that there's nobody else listening to this who's, who who thinks this is the most ridiculous story in the world is there? Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Do you want a song? Yeah.
So, Mike, was it who is it? Was it you that was speaking to Johnny Marr, or was it my friend Simon? I thought you were, and I told you who he was. No, that never happened in the. Oh, end. what a shame! But my friend, I think my friend, or maybe I dreamt it. Anyway, my friend Simon was speaking to Johnny Marr, and uh, he, he said, "So, you know, you can never get back together with the Smiths." And he said, "Yeah, maybe." He said, "But I don't need to. But that's my that's my banker. Yeah. If ever I need ten million quid." I've got that in the bank if I need to go to it. Well, he reckons, but Morrissey's not well. Oh, he'll be all right. He wants to jump on that quick. I saw Morrissey in concert about two years ago. He was brilliant. Yeah, I saw him um, about 20 years ago. He was brilliant. Uh, he lay on the floor yeah, he does that, for he? most of it. He's not well, is he? Well, he was having a rest. He was quite a big fella. He kept going through shirts. Yeah. Very sweaty man. You Cliff, isn't it? Hmm? Where's Dealey? Milton Keynes. Smoothly done, Kelly. Uh, hello. <laughs> Look at the state of that. <laughs> It looks so that. Where's Dealey? Milton Keynes. All right, nice one. Good, I'm glad we've got that sorted. Hey, here's a funny story. Oh, we need a laugh. Unless you're the bride. Oh. In this scenario for whom her life is ruined. Well, I knew the bride when she used to rock and roll, yes. She didn't. What? A groom has divorced his bride on their wedding night after oh. seeing her face for the first time. Ooh, the cha-cha. Cu- the couple from Saudi Arabia agreed to marry each other despite not having met face-to-face. Of course they did. A face- popular custom in certain Middle Eastern countries. You said face-to-face. Well, that's not necessarily... Face to face, face to face. I've just written a song. Yeah, a rubbish one. Can I have a cough? When the bride... Oh, a big one. No, I don't think he wants any more. Really big, I think you've had really enough. big coffee. I think you've had enough. Really big coffee. I think you've had enough. Ah! You need to calm down. Oh! Yeah, go When the bride removed her veil and smiled for the camera, her new husband leapt to his feet. You are not the girl I want to marry, he said. You're not the one I'd imagined. I'm sorry, but I divorce you. And that was that. Well, that'll teach her. The bride collapsed in tears as wedding guests tried to resolve the dispute, but their efforts failed, according to a Saudi newspaper. The jilting was met with anger on social media networks. Oh, are you... One commentator said he caused her great pain through his irresponsible attitude. He should appreciate that beauty is in the character, not in the face. Oh, it's it's always sad when uh, marriages end on a sour note. Oh. No one buys fish fingers anymore. I tell you why, because they are rubbish. I can't eat fish fingers because when I was eight, uh, my mum cooked me some fish fingers, and uh, this was in the seventies when food wasn't really regulated. And was the was it grey fish fingers like at school? Yeah, it was great. It was great, and I, I've since then I've not I've never been able to eat a fish finger. You want a posh fish finger? Oh. Posh fish fingers is all right. Catherine. What? I don't know. Um... Soft, white, flaky meat. <laughs> it's not only meat, is it? But you know what I mean. Brits are losing their taste for fish fingers. I like fish fingers. It's bad news for the tea time staple. Fish fingers will turn 60 next year. You want to throw them out? <laughs> They're only 60? That's ridiculous. What do you think Elizabeth I was eating fish fingers? Yeah. Of course it was it's a, a modern phenomenon. Fish finger sandwiches, bit of catch. Brands such as Bird's Eye, which launched the product in 1955, saw the quantity sold drop by up to 7%. The frozen treat... It's not a treat, is it? Not a <laughs> frozen one, treat. ...which once accounted for 10% of all fish eaten in Britain has lost out to fresh fish and tin products. Good. We're refining our palates. No, we're not. We're getting um, up ourselves. What? We're getting up ourselves. What? Don't shoot a fox. Uh-huh. No, I would not shoot a fox. Why, why not? I probably would. You're not allowed to. Yes, you are. No, you're not. I thought you were. Not in the, not in the you're town. You're not to chase them first. Not in the town, you're not. All right, go on. You, only if you're a farmer. I thought if you were a rent-a-kill, you could. 
Here's um, uh, here's a, sorry. There's a st- Where did, what is this relation? To? Urban Fox Assassin. There's an interview with a man who wages war on back garden menace. Uh, he shot 13 in two hours in one back garden stakeout. As a picture of some dead foxes. But then there's a box. because he is allowed to because he is a pest controller. Yeah, exactly. Then then there is a box here. TV uh, Ben in dogfight. This is this is the best sentence ever. Which TV Ben? Fogel. Oh, the, the, the face not- of tea. Ah. Uh. Telly, listen to this. Right. Telly host Ben Fogel. Rugby tackled a fox that ran at his pet Labrador. Just imagine that. Ben Fogel, the face of tea, rugby tackling a fox. It's like that guy that draws weird pictures on, on uh, Twitter, if you ask him to. Yes. I'm going to ask him to draw Ben Fogel rugby tackling a fox that would run at his pet Labrador. I don't think that's all that brave. I've seen these urban foxes. There's one round here. It's tiny. I rugby tackled it and gave it a nudge. A hard nudge. Inca was fine, but I twisted my ankle. Oh, what a man. Oh. A charity worker claims she was sacked from raising money for guide dogs for the blind. Good. Why? What? Why? No bad. Why? Um, because she was blind. Visually impaired. There we go, you see. Zoe Goodman, 19, suffers from Stargatz disease, which is causing oh. the progressive loss of her vision, and struggled to read the computer screen in the call centre where she worked. Ah, so she couldn't do her job. She asked for magnifying software to help her cope, but was told it was not available, and then was then asked not to return to work. Well... <clears throat> I think it's probably more complicated than that. She couldn't do her job. Yeah, but she's working for one of the leading blind charities. She couldn't do her job. Yeah, but she's working for one of the leading blind charities. Again, that's irrelevant. She Mm. couldn't do her job. Mm. Should they have enabled her to do her job? Uh, I think they have to make... um, uh, uh, I think they have to try. So she asked for this thing and they said no and don't come back. Apparently. According to her. Apparently, I do think, yes, I'm all for, you know, all kinds of people... Getting jobs, disabled people, women. (laughs) But if they can't do that job, they shouldn't be doing that a job. Can you do me a favour? Yes, mate. I'm only a woman. Can you read this gesture? One finger, two fingers, mate. Flipping it. Thanks very much. 08459 455 555. I speak a dissent. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Things are moving quite well around Stevenage at the moment, but having a look at the A1M on the speed sensors, it's looking quite slow around Junction 7 for Stevenage. On the M1 southbound, it's looking quite heavy at the moment between Junction 10 for the Luton Airport Spur Road, and in Boreham Wood, looking at the Barnet Bypass, that's queuing between the Sterling Corner and the Mill Hill Circus. On the M25 anti-clockwise, it's queuing between Junction 17 for Maple Cross and 16 for the M40. They're having a look around High Wycombe, that's not looking too bad at the moment, and looking at the trains, there are so any problems there at the the moment either. Samantha Breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Samantha. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number. Makes sense. If the woman couldn't do her job because of her disability, it doesn't matter where she was working, then... Well, then she shouldn't have the job, surely. You can give us a call about that or pretty much anything you want, to be honest. I've got an interesting email uh, from Jill uh, about the mum we spoke to yesterday... Remember that? She called an ambulance because her little boy was fitting. But we've had a statement from the East of England Ambulance Board, Society, Federation, Service. I'll read you Jill's email after the news. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's seven o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, former Milton Keynes mayor resigns as councillor. Man charged with rape at Bedford Takeaway and Wickham miss out on return to top spot. BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes former mayor Subhan Shafiq has resigned as a councillor after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. It follows months of pressure and comes straight after an internal audit committee report questioned his evidence. The report states that from now on, anyone on the sex offenders register will not be granted a taxi licence. Speaking before news of the resignation, the leader of Milton Keynes Council, Peter Marland, said questions still remain for the former mayor. I think that when the audit committee comes to make a judgement on that, they want to know why certain elements of the evidence he gave don't necessarily compute with other bits of evidence he gave. I do think that those questions for Sapan are growing. 
A man's been charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford. The woman in her 20s was attacked at the branch in Tavistock Street on Friday night between 10 to 10 and 11.15. 38-year-old Masse Jandrezic, of no fixed address, has been remanded in custody to appear before magistrates today. A review has found that more than a quarter of sex offences reported to police are not being recorded. The Inspectorate of Constabulary estimates that almost one in five of all crimes is not officially counted. A woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. Janet Bowles from Great Hormead near Buntingford says that by the time paramedics arrived, her son had lost consciousness. It follows another case highlighted on this programme yesterday, but Unison Regional Organiser Tim Roberts says the union is confident things will improve. Staggeringly, actually, the trust is, is saying that it's um, it's short of between 500, um, uh, five and 600 frontline staff. So, I mean, that, that's, the, that, that's the, the scale of the problem it's facing at the moment. But it's confident and we, we, we've seen the plan. Bedfordshire Police have released details of an attack on a pregnant girl who was pulled to the ground and kicked in the stomach outside her Luton home. Four men attacked the 18-year-old as she was walking home in Rudyard Court on Friday afternoon, October the 31st. A passing motorist took her to a police station. A hospital checkup confirmed her baby was unharmed. MPs have warned that the organised sexual abuse of children uncovered this year in Rotherham is likely to be widespread across England. The Communities and Local Government Committee called on councils to urgently review their child protection systems. In sport, Wickham missed the chance to return to the top of League Two last night. Gareth Ainsworth's side lost 3-1 to Burton at Adams Park. They were just off it and it's going to happen. It's, it wasn't our night. Uh, I'm not too keen on midweeks at the moment. We, that's, that's the only time we get beat and uh, kept, me, kept me back to Saturdays any day. We're third in the league still and at this stage of the season no one would have expected that. Tonight it's Scotland versus England in a friendly in Glasgow, the first clash between the two sides in Scotland since 1999. The weather, a generally cloudy day with isolated showers at times, some sunny intervals this afternoon, a maximum temperature 11 degrees Celsius and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Today on BBC Three Counties Radio. From nine. The JVS Show. With the big phone in, the hottest topic of the day and your consumer problems. From 12. Nick Coffer. Christine Black returns to help you overcome your anxieties and fears and I'll be finding out exactly what Al Anon in Luton do. From three. Roberto Peroni. I'm here with a roundup of the day's news, the latest travel and your stories. From seven. Mark Forrest. I'll bring you the best bits from everything that's been happening on BBC Local. Radio. Today on BBC Three Counties Radio. Morning, guys. Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, a busy first hour. If you've just tuned in, you missed some cracking music. You can still give us a call if you want. What are we talking about? Well, let me tell you, shall I? Taxi councillor admits defeat, kind of. The ambulance service defends response times. And charities call for more sex in care homes. Hey! 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. Catherine, have we got any texts or anything? We've not really given them anything to... Uh... We haven't really got any texts we can read out. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh, they're so naughty, That's aren't they? you, that... You what? encourage that, that, encourage that element. Any... I encourage no naughtiness. I've certainly not got my record out of the boot of the car by Mr King. Well, that will come, I'm sure. <laughs> Milton Keynes's former mayor, Subhan Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor after he vouched for a serial rapist who granted a taxi driver licence. Follows months of pressure and comes straight after an internal audit report questioned his actions. Mr Shafiq had already resigned as mayor but wrote a resignation letter saying he would no longer be a councillor. Well, Peter Marlin told our reporter Tony Fisher he shouldn't have vouched for a serial rapist. I've never given a reference. I don't know anybody in my group that's given a reference. Um, I think that when you're elected into a position of responsibility, it's 
it's quite difficult to do so with 100% certainty. Um, I don't think councillors should be given references in that way, and I think he was misjudged to do so. Um, and but the it, system it, allowed him to. The system allows for many things, and, and it all comes back to that personal responsibility. Just because the system allows it doesn't necessarily mean it's right or proper to do so. Well, our reporter, Justin Dealey, has been speaking to taxi drivers in Milton Keynes this morning. Well, sir, as a, a taxi driver here in Milton Keynes, uh, upright and early working, uh, Mr Shafiq has now resigned as a councillor. Uh, are you happy about that? Yeah, I do, because what he was doing was wrong. See, because he did not even know the person, he said uh, it's OK for him to drive a taxi. And how's trade been for you over the past few weeks? Has your trade gone down oh, by quite a bit? Very, very down. Nearly, you can say, about 60% is down. It's down 60%, and I'm you're blaming that on, on the scandal that we heard about a few weeks ago. Yes, it's got to yes, be, hasn't yes, it? Yes, yes, that's right, all right because of the thing what he's been doing see, was wrong. That's why we innocent people, we are suffering, see. How unfair is that, that, that you've done nothing wrong, you're trying to earn a decent living here, yeah. and your trade is down 60% because of something that was completely out of your hands? That's so unfair, isn't it? It is, it is unfair. Not for, only for me, for all the driver is unfair. Well, Kerry, give us your reaction to the fact that Mr Shafiq has now stood down as a local councillor here in Milton Keynes. Well, I think he should have stood down a long time ago. I think he should have stood down as soon as the incidents came to light, when the media and the press got hold of it. Um, and now we're finding now that we have to do redo our uh, a, a new a new check, which is called DBS, mm. which seems to be a check on the CRB. Yeah. And the way they've worded the letter here. Yes, sir. You've actually got the letter here with you. Yeah, T yeah. Tell us about the first couple of lines on that letter. Well, it, it says here. I'll read it out. We want to assist you in restoring public faith in your service. To do this, we are requiring all taxi licence holders to undertake a free DBS check. Well, I renewed my badge last year, so I've already done that check. But they want to check the check. Yeah. Um, so even though you've done absolutely nothing wrong, no, exactly. you feel like you're being unfairly treated over, the, over this of, whole of situation? Course. Of course, yeah. Um, I mean, I've got to take time off as well to go and see them and, you know, and um, it, it's, it's, well, as far as I'm concerned, and I've felt it for a few years, the council make the rules up as they go along and it's all red tape. And regarding the whole incident, it was red tape anyway. Because I've been a taxi driver 18 years and we've always undergone these checks every three years when the badge is re renewed. Mm -hmm. And for somebody to vouch for another person, I've never heard of that before in my life, you know. And um, as far as I was, as far as I'm concerned, as soon as that fellow went into um, Blake Hall to fill out his CRB form, they should have said, "Thanks, mate, but no, no yeah. thanks," yeah. you know, and they should have sent him away. Sadly, that didn't happen. That's what we're yeah. talking about it yeah. today, Kerry. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks for showing us that letter, and uh, all the best. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Well, listening to that is Katrina Morris, chair of the new overall regulatory subcommittee. They grant the licences. Uh, Katrina, it's now up to you to decide whether councillors can vouch for potential taxi drivers. What, what are you going to do? Um, yes, thank you. Good morning. Uh, that's obviously one of the uh, things that's come out of the action plan. Uh, the whole of this plan goes to the audit committee in a week or so's time, and obviously everything will be discussed at that point. But I have to say I was interested in what Pete Marlin said, because like him, I don't give references either. There's something about a reference given by a councillor is seen as perhaps something more than it is, um, and therefore, for exactly his reasoning, I don't give them either. I think it would be odd to ban everybody from doing it but i do think that it's it's a strange thing for people to do but clearly it's something we now need to consider and see whether we should actually disallow them uh, councillors from giving references i have to say though on all the ones i've sat in um i don't i've never had anybody other than councillor shafiq come and give a reference anyway uh, talk us through some of the changes that, that are taking place. Is it right if you're if you're on the sex offenders register, you won't be able to get a taxi license at all? That's one of the proposals. Yes, absolutely. That's that's gone in as is now part of the policy. Um, there are a few policy changes, but most of the proposed changes relate to the process, um, relate to, to how we handle things. But again, I think a lot of what's come out in the report is that the decisions that were made remain bizarre decisions. They're still, you know, although they followed the process, they did as uh, the policy required, the rest of us would still not have given uh, those licences. What if you've been on the sex offenders register in the past? 
Um, again, don't know in detail yet. This is just a, a proposal that's come out yesterday. The policy itself says if you are on the sex offenders uh, list, then you won't be granted one. Uh, or I need to see in detail now whether that part of the policy needs amending in light of what's come out in the report, because you're right. If somebody has previously been on the sex offenders list, are they now considered to be off the sex offenders list and therefore we shouldn't consider that anymore? The reality is DBSs show everything, uh, and enhanced DBS shows everything that has ever happened in somebody's life that uh, brings them to the, to the police, and therefore it would still be on a DBS. We would still see all of that information, even if somebody was no longer actually on the sex offenders list. Uh, Councillors who are responsible for granting licences will be getting training. What, what training do they need? I would have thought it's pretty much common sense. You don't give uh, taxi licences to dodge pots. Yes, I, I, I'm with you on that one. Um, we all had training <coughs> before, before we sit on these uh, committees, the, the ones that make decisions. Um, uh, we're going to organise some more training uh, for everybody that's already set up now to happen. Uh, there's a man that has a, a, a great knowledge of taxi licensing across the country. He's coming in to talk to us all. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm with you on that one. There are, to me, some no-brainers out there. All political parties uh, th- had some hand in this mess, but Labour councillor Gladstone McKenzie, I, I think, is the only one to apologise, isn't he? From what I can understand, yes, absolutely, of the current councillors, indeed. And I don't know if you've, you've read uh, Mr Shafiq's uh, uh, resignation letter. Are you happy with that? I haven't seen it, no, and oh. I, um, I, I understand, or have I got it wrong, that he didn't, it hasn't been sent to his leader, it was sent to the press as a resignation, which I think is interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, 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 that is interesting, and he, he's MK News he sent it to, and it also it doesn't really seem to say sorry, it just says he's doing it to protect his family. It doesn't sound like a remorseful man, does it? I have to say, when I read the report yesterday, the good work that you and your colleagues have done in the media recently... Having read through the report, there wasn't anything that came out as particularly new to me that you hadn't already picked up on. You'd already picked on, up on that there was more than one. There was a variety of things. You'd picked up on the fact that there was a, a difference in, in how long he'd known the gentleman, all of those sorts of things. You'd already picked those up. So when I read it yesterday, I, my first thought was, I don't see anything new in this that hasn't already come out. So I'm interested that obviously there was something new that he felt was now the time to resign. Finally, Katrina, do you think that Milton Keynes has, has flagged up problems that, that other councils have, have been lucky not to deal with. I have no doubt in that. Yeah. And I think there are an awful lot of councils out there going, thank goodness it wasn't us, and rather rapidly uh, looking into their taxi services as well. I, there is no doubt about that in my mind. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's good. It'll clear up the taxi services throughout the country, and ours hopefully will start to be right up there as the, the, the taxi service that anybody can trust the most. And that's what we're working with the trade to ensure we can do. Uh, and finally, just going back to Mr Shafiq, he also says in the letter he doesn't want to discuss this any further. Mm. Is that good enough? <clears throat> um, I think the public will have a, a say on that, won't they? At the end of the day, I think there are perhaps still more questions to be answered. I think there's more questions to be answered by some of his colleagues as well. Um, and I, I don't think this is going to go away if he'd come out earlier on and talked more about it then it might have gone away more quickly for him but I feel it won't. Katrina, nice to talk to you. Thank you very much. And let's hope this all gets sorted out and these new uh, measures and suggestions will go some way towards that. Katrina Morris, chair of the uh, well, the subcommittee which grants cab licences. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number should you wish to give us a call. I know we've not really given you uh, kind of anything to sink your teeth into yet. We'll have a little look through the papers, see if anything pops up that you might want to have you heard on. You can, of course, as you, you know this, regular listeners, if there's something that we're not talking about that you feel we should be, then you can give us a call anyway. Or if you just want to phone up and let's say hello, do you know what I mean? Oh eight four five. Do you know what I mean? Oh eight. You know what I mean? Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Let's get the travel. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Having a look at the M1 southbound and it's heavy on the approach to Junction 10 for the M1 Luton Airport Spur Road and next to that in Mark Yate on the A5 southbound it's looking heavy on the speed sensors between Lynch Hill and the M1 Junction 9 for Redbourne as well. On the motorways towards London the A1M southbound is looking very slow around Junction 7 for Stevenage and the M25 anti-clockwise is heavy at Junction 24 for Potter's Bar. Elsewhere and Boreham Wood the bypass, Barnet Bypass is queuing between the Stirling Corner and the Mill Hill Circus southbound and in E 
feeling on the North Circular Road. The traffic lights aren't working at Uxbridge Road, so that's causing queues from Knightsbridge Avenue. Having a look at the trains and the snow reports for any problems there at the moment. Samantha Brough, BBC Three Counties Radio. Yeah. 7.16, it's Tuesday the 18th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes' former mayor, Subhan Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. A man has been charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford and a woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. BBC Three Counties Radio. Rob, how's it going? Every weekday from three. Good afternoon, welcome to the show. Local people. What's your story? It seems there's a law for them and then there's one for the press. And I disagree with what they're saying. Local views. In some cases, sort of 40% loss in value on their properties. Has Kelly Luton got it right? There is a responsibility when you're paid from the public purse. Local life. Do you want to know how much my carer's allowance goes up by every April when the tax year changes? Two quid. Roberto Peroni. And is it fair to target people on benefits. Weekdays from three. BBC Three Counties Radio. A little bit niche, mate. Now, mystery caller, line one. Who is this? It's a mystery caller. Oh, it's not Tony Fisher, is it? It's a mystery caller. Yeah, well, have I worked out who the mystery caller is? Um, maybe. Right. Is it Tony Fisher, the reporter who, in inverted commas, works here? Uh, um... I think we'd like to rephrase that. OK. Is it Tony Fisher, the bloke that hangs about in our office every day? Uh, can you rephrase that? OK. Is it homeless Tony Fisher who sits in the corner drinking from a bottle of meths? <laughs> I think you better rephrase that. Catherine, what does he want me to say? Is it Tony Fisher? Uh, I am saying hello. But is it Tony Fisher? Uh, I'm saying hello. Oh, of course it's Tony Fisher. <laughs> Are you Tony Fisher? I might be. Right. Hello. Hello. You all right? Yeah, fine, thanks. You in today? I am, yeah, are you? See you later then. All right. <laughs> oh, eight, four, five, nine, four, double, am five. Am I in? <laughs> You're talking to me. Peter's in Warmer Green. Morning, Peter. Good morning. What do you have a whinge about today? I would like to talk about the different councils and their methods. Can you believe that Tony Fisher just you called us up? Can you switch your N- not at all. Do you know who Tony Fisher is? No, not at all. No, no, nor do I. <laughs> no, he's one of our he's one of our talented reporters here, as opposed to one of our untalented reporters here. Well, that's very nice indeed, because there's very few of them about. <laughs> well, Tony, Tony is what I like to call old school. He's been doing this for the last fifty years, and so he employs proper old-fashioned techniques. He drinks whiskey for breakfast. And probably manners too. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. He, um, he smokes tabs and he doesn't mind roughing up somebody if it means he gets the story. Well, I don't, I don't understand that if he's that old. Well, yeah, some <laughs> of these old boys have still got it. I remember once, Peter, yeah. I was doing some filming, OK? I was doing a thing called Vox Pops, which is where you stop people in the street and you ask them questions. Yes. I was stopping people in the street and asking them silly questions. I saw a gentleman coming towards me, a short fella, very short, old, probably in his 70s. I thought, I recognise this man, but I can't think who it is, right? Yeah. So he came up to me, and I started asking him some silly questions. W- probably something along the lines of, uh, if Princess Diana's DNA would injected it, was injected into some meat, would you eat it? Something like that, right? And as I'm talking to him, being cheeky to him, it clicked who it was. <laughs> it was Mad Frankie Fraser. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was Mad Frankie Fraser. I was cheeky, Mad Frankie Fraser. Yeah, well, I, I, I've got a background with people like that, really. Were you a gangster? No, no, no. Gangster? But the, but the two of the brothers used to come down to our street, one of them caught in a girl. Uh, which, which brothers? The Craze? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the... Uh, Probably guess which one. I used to play football with Ronnie Knight. Did, did Barbara you? Windsor's Barbara first husband. Windsor's first husband, who was, uh, 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 had his hand in various businesses, I think we can say. Well, all his brothers, nearly all his brothers had uh, scrapyards, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Barbara, uh, when we used to hold football meetings, Barbara's yes. been in there. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was in Stoke Newington. Beautiful. Our, our Cola Arms, it was called. So Bar- did you saw Barbara Windsor at her prime? Well, I, no, I saw Barbara Windsor when she was a 17, 18-year-old. 
flippant. And that was, she wasn't in the prime then, but she was a lovely lady. She was about to get into her prime. Did her bra ever fall off? I mean, or was that just in the movies? No, Barbara never had a really big bosom anyway. Thank you so much for that, Peter. (laughs) You've not called in to talk about Barbara Windsor's bosom, though, have you? No, not at all. What have you called in for? Well, when when you're talking about the uh, uh, ambulances and that sort of thing... We see, well, you need to define whether they're a private company or not, because various areas are, are covered by private companies. It's not a private company. Oh, well, that's all right. Well, I, yeah, well, I, I, I clarify Sorry. that. Yes. Uh, and when, you, when we're talking about anything in national law now, we should define whether it's private part of it. OK. Because there's so many private parts now. Uh, well, we've all, got, we've all got private parts, Peter. Thank you. It's an NHS trust. Eric's on the M1. Morning, Eric. Good morning, Ian. How are you? I'm all right, fella. I'm all right. What have you got for us? Um, it's slightly in defence of East of England Ambulance Service. The hospital trusts have got a lot to answer for this because they're closing A&Es in hospitals. Yes. And the ambulance services have got to go to the farthest hospital. Now, Hertfordshire has got two A&Es, Watford and Stevenage. So all the ambulances for urgent A&Es have got to go to those. It holds up everything. So therefore... When they've got to go out to somewhere like Berkhamsted from Watford, yep. it's going to take a long time. Now, recruitment, um, when patient transport, you belonged, shall we say, within the ambulance service itself, it gave the people on patient transport an insight to the main blue light service. And a lot of recruitment came through patient transport. Because it's now been privatised... Oh, yeah. That service is not really available. So the ambulance service have got to get their recruits from outside of the service, which doesn't always help. Because a lot of people think, oh, yeah, it looks nice to go on a blue light, matching. But when they go there and find that they're not dealing with blue light incidents all the time, they're dealing with ordinary, straightforward cases like an elderly person that's fallen, a lot of them don't like it. And I I think the hospital trusts I've got a heck of a lot to answer for this. Eric, thank you very much indeed. Well, the reason we're talking about it is kind of a continuation from yesterday's show. Well, we spoke to... Uh, do you remember we spoke to a mum from Bedfordshire who had uh, a little boy who was... Uh, it was his first birthday on Saturday. Um, and she was demanding answers from the East of England Ambulance Service after paramedics didn't turn up while her baby was having a seizure. Well, we've had a statement, haven't we, from the East of England Ambulance Service regarding that, Catherine. We have. And, and, and in their statement, and it'll be great to speak to the mum again to find out, in their statement they said, well, it wasn't a 999 call, it was a 111 call. Yep, and that they didn't classify it as being a life-threatening emergency. And, in fact, they sent out two ambulances in her direction but deviated them for two different other cases, one of which was a child who'd fallen over and hurt themselves. Well, Jill has emailed him. Just in regards to that, and we'll go to our guest in a second. Jill says, Yesterday I had sympathy for that lady with a fitting child, but with a small pinch of salt as everyone tells their own version of the truth. However, today, after hearing the statement that said it was a 111 call, I've lost that sympathy. As a mum, if my child was limp and lifeless, I would call 999, not 111. One, one. Right, I'm going to call her because I don't believe it was a 111. One, one. I would be very surprised. If your kid's having a fit, you'd call 111. One, one. done CPR on him. Phone her gonna... up and find out was the first call she made 999 or 111. It does look like there are some huge inconsistencies between these two stories. I'm wondering whether we've got the right case or whether there's been a breakdown in communication. Find out, and, and if not, then if it was 999, then we have to go back to the East of England Amic Service, yeah. and they have to come on. Absolutely. They can't send us a statement. All right, let me have a look. Thank you very much. We'll find out that out, Jill, and find out exactly what's going on. Well, th- th- after yesterday's show, uh, a woman called uh, Janet Bowles got in touch with us, and she joins me now. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. Janet, what made you call us? Well, I rung um, Three Counties um, two or three weeks ago, regarding a very similar thing. Oh, God, I didn't realise. Go on, what happened? Yeah, um, I've got a 25-year-old son who's got cerebral palsy, and he has intermittent um, bowel obstruction. Right. And we've been under uh, the Lister Hospital for years. Well, the Lister Hospital actually asked us for a second opinion to go to a different hospital, which we have, which was Adam Brooks. He had a consultants meeting on the 23rd of October... Well, on the 26th of October, he actually had um, an occurrence of this. Yeah. Well, previous to that, we've been to our GP, we've set up a care plan, everything's in plan. I have a letter that I carry with me at all times, and he has to go via ambulance to the hospital. 
So, why, so, why, can I just ask, why does he have to go via ambulance? Because what he's got can be life-threatening. OK. Yeah, and, and extreme pain. Um, and because he's a, um, allergic to dimorphine, oh, they can't administer that. Yeah. Or tramadol. So we have to be careful what we give him. So I followed the procedure 111, which they already have his notes on screen. So with their discussion, within two or three minutes of talking to them, they said they would call the ambulance. Yeah. Well, we waited for the ambulance. So in the meantime, I then got in touch with... I made a 999 call and asked where this ambulance was. They were aware of the call. And then I can't remember if I made two 99 calls or just the one, but then my husband made one. So I can't remember now if we'd done two or three calls and just said, you know, where is this ambulance? We need it. Because by the time the ambulance got here, he was almost unconscious. So in, eventually we get the ambulance. It takes us to Addenbrooke's where we're to go because he's under their care. But when we got there, we were in a queue. We were either uh, ambulance number five or ambulance number six. So um, our paramedic, she got out, went into uh, A&E to book him in. Yeah. And she came back. She said, we're not allowed in the hospital. Oh. Said, well, what do you mean, you're not allowed? She said, no, she said, we have to wait in the ambulance until there's a bed for oh, the bakery. Oh, I've heard of this before, so, yeah. yeah. So they are, there's either... And your boy's in pain? Yeah. And a, a lot of pain? Yeah. So we was in the ambulance for over an hour waiting oh, to get in. That Janet. ambulance was held up for an hour. And whilst we were in there, I said to the paramedic, this is ridiculous. What happens if you get a call... Or, you know, there's a 999 call and a man is having, or somebody's having a heart attack. She just looked at me, she didn't say anything, she just shrugged her shoulders. This isn't their fault. No, and I've got to say that the, 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 the majority of uh, paramedics and ambulance staff are excellent and yeah. they are as frustrated with the system as you are yeah. and as we are. Yeah, exactly. But we were in a queue to go in and Adam's book's pro- policy is. That you wait outside until there's a bay free. I've actually made an official complaint because his care in there after that wasn't that much better. But we're talking about the ambulance, but that it's not fair because if this carries on, Janet, up. if this carries on, Janet, this 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 uh, method they're using of people waiting out in the car park in ambulances. What, what do you think is going to happen? Somebody's going to die. Somebody will die. But they've got they're good. They have to die, don't they? Because you know we we made two or three calls. The reason they do this, if I've got this right, is to keep their waiting times down, isn't it? I so so it. The, yeah. I, I think the clock starts on when you get seen as soon as you go through mm. the hospital doors. I'm yeah. looking to and Catherine. I think that's right, isn't I it? I think that's right, yes. Yeah. So and also, um, the paramedic told us, um, from what the nurse told her, was they don't have enough room in there for all the ambulances, you know, the um, trolleys and the patients. Well, tough. Well, tough, yeah. It's, it's a hospital. <laughs> it's a hospital. Exactly. Um, how's your boy doing now, Janet? Yeah, it's, oh, touch wood. Yeah. Touch wood, he's fine. But, you know, there's procedures put in place where he should have had in a scan and everything. He never even got any pain relief whilst we were oh, in there. He yeah. never got his scan. So, at the time, we don't even know now if his bowel twisted. And we need to know. And so far, we, we've never caught it. Janet, I really appreciate you getting in touch with us. Okay. C- keep, just keep in touch with us, won't you, and let us know how things go. Oh, gosh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, and I'll put the complaint in, yeah. and then I got the, an email back to say they're not going to make this a formal complaint. Oh. So well, I well, rung her back or, um, and said, I want to make this a formal complaint. Yeah. So she said, well, the process has already started. Well, hang on, surely it's up to you whether it becomes a formal complaint. They can't dictate whether it's a formal complaint or not. I know. And then, um, so basically, she said, if I don't like their response in 25 days' time, yeah. then I can make it formal. Uh, well, I, 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 well I've not, I can't suggest what you do. Are you going to make it formal? Yes, I will. Janet, keep in touch. Let us I know will. how that goes. Thank you. Oh, yeah, some fellas died, and I know you want to complain, but we can't make it a formal complaint. Janet, thank you. I wish you and your, your boy the best of luck. We were talk- this all comes from the story we were talking about yesterday, Rebecca Holder, whose um, little boy was ten months at the time. He's a year on Saturday. Uh, she's having a birthday party. I don't, em- I don't envy her that. Those are one-year-olds. <laughs> I've, I've been there. Don't fancy that. Anyway, her little boy was fitting. 
uh, was had passed out. She was performing CPR, uh, and she had to. Well, the first ambulance didn't turn up. Had to wait an hour for the second ambulance. We had a statement from the East of England Ambulance uh, um, Service who said that uh, Rebecca, this call was originally a one 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 call. Well, we've called up Rebecca to find out exactly what what went on and why, if this is correct, she made a one 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 call. Rebecca's not very happy. We'll find out what she's got to say after this. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M1 southbound, there's been an accident at Junction 14 for Milton Keynes, so that's causing queues from the Newport Pagnell services at the moment. There's a lane closed there. On the M25, anti-clockwise, it's queuing between Junction 18 for Chorleywood and 16 for the M40. And it's also looking very heavy on the A40 Western Avenue in Uxbridge. It's queuing between the Swakeley's Roundabout and the Gypsy Corner. In Stevenage, on the A1M southbound, it's very slow at Junction 7 for Stevenage. And looking a bit further afield on the M11 southbound, there's a lane closed because of an accident on the M11 southbound between Junction 7 for Harlow and 6 for the M25. On the trains there's no reports of any problems though at the moment. Samantha Breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. With the headlines, I'm Simon Oxley. Milton Keynes' former mayor, Subban Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. The man's been charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford. Luton-based airline EasyJet has reported a 21.5% rise in annual profits to £581 million. And a woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response time don't improve. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Wickham missed the chance to return to the top of League Two after a 3-1 defeat by fellow promotion hopefuls Burton at Adams Park. Paul Hayes scored for the Wanderers from the penalty spot. His manager Gareth Ainsworth. We didn't defend well. We uh, we were unrecognisable sometimes. Uh, you know the way we defended, we didn't get the ball down and play the way we have been doing. Um, but and it's all coming one night. We uh, we lost three players as well and. You know, I make a substitute on 81 minutes thinking I'm safe and Alfie has to go off on 82. It's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, yeah. it's just all gone against us tonight. But we didn't stop fighting. We fought to the, to the right to the end. And the result means Luton stay top of League Two. The Hatters go to Burton on Saturday. And in Conference South last night, St Albans lost 3-2 at home to Farnborough. Tonight it's Scotland versus England in a friendly at Celtic Park in Glasgow. The first clash between the two sides in Scotland since 1999. Here's the BBC's football correspondent, John Murray. And so we have the latest meeting in an international series. Gordon Strachan's improving team are buoyant after their victory over the Republic of Ireland on Friday. He says he has so many players who want to play in this match. And while Roy Hodgson wasn't revealing anything about his team selection, Celtic Park can be one of the most atmospheric of football venues. His captain, Wayne Rooney, has warned the younger players what to expect. So surely it'll be a night to start with experienced heads, with the possibility of a debut later for Saido Berahino. And in darts, the world's top players are heading to Milton Keynes in the new year with the Masters tournament moving to the arena at Stadium MK. The likes of Phil Taylor and reigning world champion Michael Van Gerwen will be in Milton Keynes on Saturday, January the 31st and Sunday, February the 1st for the televised event. BBC Three Counties News and Sports. The next full bulletin is at eight. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Right, so the story yesterday was... We spoke to Rebecca Holder. Would well, you remind me of the story, Catherine? Just give, just give it a little background. We spoke to Rebecca Holder, who had a 10-month-old baby back in September. He was 10 months old. and She's throwing a first birthday party this Saturday. Good luck. Oh, no, the first birthday's no, a breeze. It's more no, about the parents. No, it's a nightmare, because you invite too many people. Yeah. You invite everybody and it's... An... Anyway, let's, let's, I'm going... You can ask her about that after. She yes. may be not be inviting the baby group. If yes. she's got any sense, she won't be. Just invite your mates. Anyway, so um, she had... Uh, Theo is ten, was 10 months old, out of the blue, had a fit, had a seizure uh, and actually stopped breathing. She was performing CPR on him, which is why I was really surprised when the ambulance service came back and suggested she'd dialed 111. Well, this is... Re- Rebecca joins us now. Good morning, Rebecca. Morning. Now... 
Can I read the statement that we've had from the East of England Ambulance Service about you? Yes, of course. This is, the, this is bits of it from their chief, uh, Anthony Marsh. This it is the says, only bit that talked about her. Yeah, have you got it in front of you, Catherine? Yeah, you read the it, rest of it's all about what they're doing to improve things. Yeah. And I thought we were more interested in this case. Um, I would like to apologise for the delay in getting to Ms Holder and her baby. The call was originally a 111 call, which was passed on to us. We coded it as a green call, non-life-threatening. We sent two ambulances, both of which had to be diverted to other patients, one to a child who'd fallen over and sustained an injury, and one to someone who was experiencing some chest pains, amongst other symptoms. The rec- and then he goes on, the recruitment of hundreds of new staff, which is underway, will further increase ambulance cover to improve our response really to patients. Satisfied. Now, Rebecca, yes. your 10-month-old boy was unconscious. Yes. He was fitting. Yes. You had to perform CPR. Yes. Why on earth did you call 111 and not 999? Of course I didn't call 111. Of course I called 999. Um, do you know, this is, nearly, this is kind of laughable that, that they're saying that I rang 111. Surely, one, all their phone calls are meant to be recorded, aren't they? Uh, I, think, I think they often are, yes. So how, how hard is it to find my original phone call? which was to 999. Yes, I admit I was a bit, obviously, screaming. How, help how dare you be upset reason. with your little 10-month-old unconscious? Yeah, but it, I can promise you, Ian, I rung 999. You're absolutely sure that in the confusion you didn't dial 111 I'm, by mistake? Oh, I'm a... I would... I, <laughs> you're speechless, I can tell. I, I, you know I have to ask this question, but you're saying categorically... You did not dial 111. Of course I didn't call 111. And this is the occasion. You gave him CPR and you said even after that he was lifeless, he was floppy, you were terribly worried. And I phoned 999 three subsequent times to chase that ambulance and all the operator was saying to me was, oh, I can't tell you where our ambulances are right now. And I said, so you're telling me you don't know where your ambulances are? And she was like, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. It's on its way, that's all I know. And in the end, you ended up taking Theo yourself, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, this is why I was really... I'm really disappointed that, that Anthony Marsh, or uh, nobody from the East of England Ambulance Service, has, has had the gojones to come on this morning. I thought they were going to come on, Rebecca. Well, what are they hiding, though, Ian? This is what makes me angry. Like, why can't they just come on? I've waited seven weeks now. You've, you've had more than what I've had. All I get is... Yes, um, we'll get back to you in 48 hours. We'll get back to you in 48 hours. I was speaking to Dean... Um, I'm allowed to name names. No, let's not mention any names for the moment until we follow this up. But I've got a record, or what they say is a record, of your other phone calls. Do you want to go through those? Yeah. OK, so the first one, 27th of the 9th, uh, 2014. Yeah. 1749 is when your call came in. Interestingly, it's under the heading time of 999 call, not 111 call. Green, green 2, non-life-threatening, require a 30-minute response. Uh, 1820 was when you got the response. Caller advised they were making their way to the hospital. Did you call them to say you were going to the hospital yourselves? Um, I, I think my partner might have, yeah. yeah. OK, so here's the next one. 1st of the 10th, uh, 2014. You phoned them at 2045. Again, a green 2, non-life-threatening response. Um, so they reckon that uh, 2052, an RRV was on the scene. Yes. Yeah. That, do you know why that was? There was this, this police officer down the road, um, and I'd gone to the shop. This is how quickly Theo can change. I'd gone to the shop, come back. Obviously, he wasn't left on his own. He was left with my partner. Right. Come back, and he had a fit. And I'd seen a car, a police car, two doors down the road, and obviously, fear of God, of what happened before, no ambulance, I ran down the road, bare feet, banging on that police officer's windscreen. They ran up the road and they rung the ambulance. So this is a rapid response vehicle on the scene. and then um, Through their radio. And then a few minutes later, 2059, an ambulance arrived. OK, so that's the second one. The 13th of the 10th, 2014, two minutes past six, again, another green two, non-life-threatening, require a 30-minute response. They reckon 1855. That's the one you told me took 52 minutes for them to arrive. Yeah. Right, this is, this is what I want to do, right? So some of it's right. Yeah, this is what I want to do. We need to get, we need to get Anthony Marsh uh, on the show because the, 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 the statement, the main thrust of the statement is inaccurate and misleading and unfair to Rebecca, saying that the call was a 111. We also need to try and get... Um, Rebecca, if we were able to get the recording of that call... Yeah? Would you mind if we played it out? No. OK. I, you, I won't hold you. If you, change your mind, if you change your mind and let us know. But we need to try and get the recording of that call and hear just how desperate it was. Also, oh. Rebecca, he had another seizure yesterday, didn't he? Yes. Oh, mate. 
So what did you do? Did you take him yourself? No, uh, I tell you what I did. That because we had a con because we have a consultant, and she said his seizures his seizures don't warrant taking him to hospital because he's because he could have epilepsy. That this is a process that could take years to diagnose, and then it takes years to um, prescribe proper medication for him. So they've ruled out um, a brain tumour, which is fantastic. Well, that's something, isn't it? That's just, that's something to to hold on to. So, so now the more probable cause is that he has a type of epilepsy. Okay. Um, but we need obviously he needs to have MRI scans and stuff before that is diagnosed. But that's what they're looking at. And she said it's just going to be something that Theo does. Mm. We just have to get used to it. Don't call 999. That's that sign. But he doesn't stop breathing every time then, because the first time he did, didn't he? No, he out all the time. I'm sorry, if my little boy passed out, I would be calling 999. I don't care what any special... I'm not suggesting you necessarily do that, Rebecca, but I would be calling 999. Well, this is it. So I thought, you know what, I will do it differently this time. I, I called 111 yesterday. If that's, if that's where they're getting their information from. I phoned 111 and said, look, my son's suffers from seizures. This is what's happened. And she said, you need an ambulance. I said, yes, I know I do. I said, but you ring them, because when I ring them, they don't come. Right, OK, this is what we're going to do, Rebecca. We're going to speak... within, like, 20 minutes. Yeah, we're going to speak to the East of England Ambulance Service today. We are going to try and get them on the show tomorrow. I doubt we will, to be honest. They sent a statement already. I doubt they will. But we need them to, to correct this information. We're also going to try and get that phone call if we can. That yeah. will take a while. I want them at least to talk to you, Rebecca. It's all right talking to us, but they've not spoken to you properly, have they? Well, no, because um, one of the other heads of um, that um, Andrew Sillou got involved for us, the head of um, the ambulance service, um, gave my partner his mobile number and said, you know, any problems, ring me. I will have a result for you in 48 hours. This was a month ago. Um, my partner rang him and, he, and my partner said his name and he hung up. Oh. My partner's left two voicemails and he hasn't got back to him. So I don't actually know what they're doing. Mm. I don't know if they've done... I don't know. But they're just really reluctant to of give course, me any... Yeah, I know. We can tell. Uh, Rebecca, we, we, I'm afraid um, Catherine's sinking her teeth into this now, so um, uh, that they will start giving us answers and they will start talking to you. Yeah. I've got to ask, are you still doing this party on Saturday? Of course I am. How many people have you invited? <laughs> yeah. Go on. Is it mostly parents or are you inviting loads of babies? Well, Theo, obviously, um, Theo doesn't go to a playgroup because of Result. what happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's one bonus, I suppose, yeah. But uh, we, we've got a lot of friends. Yeah, I know. You always... Listen, Rebecca, <laughs> too late for you now. This is my advice to any young mums and dads. Don't you always invite too many people to the first birthday yes. party. It's insane. Yes. You're going to be knackered. I've hired a hall. Oh, what? For the first one, Rebecca! You're setting a precedent, Rebecca. Oh, no! Get that one out till they're six. Listen, have a really good time. I would imagine we'll speak to you at some point this week. OK, thank All right, you. and if you hear anything, do get in touch. I will do. Thank you very much. Thank nice. you, Rebecca. Right. Hiring a hall. Shit, they should. <laughs> you, you do the first birthday party. We didn't hire a hall, we did it at home, but... We had way too... I mean, it was crammed. We've not hired a hall yet. No. Summer babies, see? I tip them all out in the garden. Right. Um, Anthony Marsh, uh, Chief of the East of England Ambulance Service, call into him straight after the show. Let's get him to, to look at that and the information he's given us is wrong. Let's assume it's, a, it's an innocent mistake. mistake. Let's assume the phone going down was a mistake as well. How, I don't know how we go about getting recorded phone calls. What, is it an FOI? What is it? How does that work? You just request it? What? Let me look at my great big book of how to do radio. <laughs> oh, wow! That big dusty tome that sits in your bottom drawer. Absolutely. That one that props the door open. I'm cracking that bad boy out. OK, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Thank you very much, Rebecca. And um, she, she was angry. You could hear that at the start. Just a bit, yeah. yeah. She was angry. And also, I mean, far be it for me to give medical advice. I never would, of course. This is, but if my boy was having seizures and was passing out. W whether a doctor or anyone had said, don't call 999, I would be on the phone to 999 every single time. He's one years old. You don't take the risk with, with that. Ah, oh, dearie me. Thank you, Rebecca. 08 uh, 459 455 555 is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. Well, from... Um from babies having uh, seizures to uh, old people seizing things. Uh, yeah, it's sex in care homes. Travel news for beds, hearts and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
On the M1 southbound, there's been an accident at Junction 14 for Milton Keynes, so that's causing queues from the Newport Pagnell services. On the A1 southbound, A1M southbound, it's looking very slow around Junction 7 for Stevenage on the speed sensors. And having a look on the speed sensors around Watford, it's starting to get quite busy on Beach and Grove around the Escort Road Junction. On the M25 anti-clockwise, it's queuing from Junction 21A for St Albans to Junction 16 for the M40. And also on the A40 Western Road around Uxbridge, it's queuing eastbound between the Swakeley's Roundabout and Gypsy Corner. In Tame, Aylesbury Road is looking very slow between Kingsley Road and the Tame Road Junction on the speed sensors. Having a look at the trains, though, there's no reports of any problems there at the moment. Samantha Breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Samantha. Just look out, guys. St Albans sounds very, very busy this morning. 7.45. It's Tuesday, the 18th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes' former mayor, Subban Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. A man will appear in court today charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford. And a woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. Coming up well old people having it away in care homes what before that let's get the weather here's uh, sarah beds hearts and bucks weather bbc three counties radio Good morning. It's a predominantly cloudy picture this morning. However, we should get some brighter spells work their way through the course of the day. We should even see some sunshine. Predominantly dry, just a slim chance, maybe a shower, uh, but they do seem to be decaying as they work their way in from East Anglia this morning. So, hopefully a dry picture as we head through the afternoon. Temperature struggling, though. It's an easterly breeze, just a light one, but it is taking the edge off. We're looking at a maximum of just 11 Celsius. Overnight tonight, could see one or two odd showers, but most places dry, could see a bit of mist and fog over the higher ground, the minimum temperature down to 5 Celsius. For tomorrow, gradually becoming brighter, one or two sunny spells as we head through the day, and still one or two showers. The maximum temperature for Wednesday, 11 Celsius, and that's your forecast. Chesham, 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 Chesham. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. Quite a quaint, pretty little town, really. I think it's a little hidden away jewel in the Chilterns, to be honest. All this week, we're celebrating Chesham. I've lived here eight, nearly 83 years. Yes. In the same house. Everybody that lives here absolutely loves the place. And full of characters. Telling everyone about where you live. It's small enough to be friendly, but it's big enough to have quite a few things. Quite an interesting place, really. Quite enjoy living here. Chesham. The big tour of Beds, Hearts and Bucks from BBC Three Counties Radio. Chesham, 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 Chesham. Didn't he used to do a show here? Chesham Partak, yes, of course he did. Thank you very much indeed. (laughs) Catherine, oh gosh, I nearly swallowed a whole lung full of air. Be careful. That didn't belong to me. Oh. Uh, I watched Tangled yesterday. It's brilliant, isn't it's, it? I'm assuming it's a Pixar Disney type affair. Yeah. Uh, Rapunzel. I didn't know the Rapunzel story. Well, no one knows the real Rapunzel story apart from me, apparently. When her hair... Stop trying to make it filthy. When it her was hair filthy. gets she lobbed... She came down with a couple of kids. When her hair gets lobbed off at the end, do you know who she looked like? Who? You. Oh. When it went um, dark and short yes. and a bit butch, she looked like you. Wow, thanks. You're welcome. Mm. She did. I thought, oh, well, there we go. Look at you, I'm not as handy with a frying pan as hey, you. It's a That's good... the only thing that made me a bit... I'm not crazy about that bit. The violence? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of violence the, in it. The pans to the face. I'm not oh, sure I want on. my no. kids thinking Mate, that's OK. Mind a... you, my dad makes them watch Popeye, Tom and Jerry. Exactly. So it's either a pan or an anvil. It's an old favourite. It's an old classic. It's a good film. Really good film. Really good it's film. It's so good. Yeah, I didn't think I'd like it, but it's brilliant. Um, that was the kind of precursor to Frozen. Frozen was a fairy tale with a difference. There was a bit in there where my boy said, oh, this is like Frozen. Uh, and there were there were a couple of bits. She rescues herself quite a lot. Yeah, it's what I quite like. I like the bit where he goes. Um, he's tied up, and he goes. I didn't want to do this. I'm going to do the smolder. <laughs> yeah, I, <know>. oh! <laughs> <laughs> I also like the bit, the recurring theme of them never getting his nose right on the wanted posters. Oh, I didn't. I hadn't picked up on that. I was watching it with a two-year-old, so you kind of. I hadn't picked he's up really on that. Really offended by the bad drawing. Oh, I'll have to have a little look at that and uh, get that again. But it's one of those films. I suspect as soon as we watched it, my youngest said, "Can we watch it again?" It's no. great. You got some texts for us, love? I've got a couple. Yeah, I'll, let, uh, I'll read them to you now. Um, this is from Jeannie. That's what I was hinting at. I know, but I was on a different page. OK. Um, Amazon. Uh, Jeannie, no, it wasn't actually this time. Oh, it was Kate doing the weather, not Sarah. Of course. Who wrote Sarah on the screen? Betsy, it was Kate doing the weather, not Sarah. Phone. OK. 
good excuse. Yeah, the old Jeannie excuse. Jeannie Milton-Keynes, um, she's talking about the taxis. She says, tax- I always sh- scrutinise taxi number plates to see if they match the licence plate. Twice I've seen taxis with plates that are not matching and the letters used are difficult to separate unless you get close, like WVM or MNM. And this is in Milton-Keynes, says Jean of NK. You want to report those? Yeah. And um, Pat says, this government is destroying the very fabric of our emergency services. This is in response to that uh, ambulance story we've been covering this morning. Meeting tar- targets covers the poor responses we find when car- calling out police and ambulance, it seems. When I hear a government minister state that immigration helps our economy, I feel sick to the teeth with these lies. Our emergency services cannot cope because well, of the open door policy flooding our o- already overstretched NHS, well, police, schools and local authorities. The immigration helping the economy isn't a lie. Those are, those are provable facts, but mm. OK. Yeah. He thinks it's uh, the M- uh, MPs are in denial and continually refuse to listen and deal with our borders first. OK, well, that's... Uh, well, I, I didn't think we'd get on to immigration from ambulances. Not so soon, not so soon. Now, leading experts. Have you finished? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Leading um, leading experts from the Alzheimer's Society and dementia care matters say that all care homes need a sex and intimacy policy. BBC Live Breakfast, BBC Five Live Breakfast, has found that at the moment there's not enough training around sex and intimacy for those with dementia and their partners, an issue which care home workers are dealing with on a daily basis. Eve Carter joins me now. She's the Deputy CEO and Senior Consultant Nurse at Dementia Care Matters. Morning, Eve. Good morning. Who first raised this issue? Um, For us as a care home sort of manager at um, at Landonead, it came up always sat sort of uncomfortably um, with us that people are quite often suppressed in their need for sexuality and closeness because of policies and procedures and systems. Um, when we met the Dementia Care Matters in 2012, we embarked on an incredible life-changing culture programme at the start of 2013, which actually enabled us to free up both the staff and people living with dementia to be truly accepted um, in the moment, in their reality, and that actually, you know, we learned a very strong message. This is all about feelings. People living with dementia completely rely on feelings. So how big an issue is it? This is how, how many residents in, in care homes are, are, are wanting to have sex? It's not around the physical aspect of, of having sex. It's around people's need to express the need for intimacy, closeness, comfort. I think there's a huge taboo that this is just about people physically having sex, and it's not. It's around actually that people living with dementia have a real need, a real inner core need for to feel close to somebody, to have that intimate time with somebody, whether that's a man or a woman. And it's about actually who they who they get from at that point in time. Eve, I don't know if you've moved. If you could just move back ever so slightly, because your line is... You, you, it sounds like you're on a mobile. It's breaking up. Uh, what, what are the proposals that, 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 that uh, are being drawn up or have been drawn up? Are you talking about on a national level? Yeah. I mean, on a national level, you know, at the moment, obviously now sort of working with Dementia Care Matters, um, which has, you know, a number of opportunities to go into sort of major care homes and large organisations. On a ground level, sort of within Landermead, it was around actually creating a policy and a culture that embraced people living with dementia and embrace their need for intimacy and closeness. And that, you know, that needed to start for us at a local level. And it was around, actually, it was the culture that embraced it. How, how do you do that? How do you encourage that culture? It's around equipping staff and it, in the sense of emotional intelligence, the whole, the training, the education is all around the feelings and actually everything starts with them. But actually, how would you feel if you were put in this position? You know, what feelings would that induce in you? And linking back all the time to remembering that people living with dementia cannot, you cannot reasonably rely on logic and reasoning. Yeah, they're not able to do this. So as a result, they are absolutely overwhelmed with feelings and some of those feelings are sexual feelings and people will have these feelings and they will act and it's actually how the staff, how families, how people visit in home, how people actually embrace that. Eve, listen, I appreciate your, your time this morning. Thank you for uh, explaining that. Eve Carter, Deputy CEO, Senior Consultant Nurse at Dementia Care Matters. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, Britain has something to be proud of. We are the best at something again. 
Um, fattest girls. In Europe, that's right. British girls are now the fattest in Europe, a study reveals today. Well done, Britain. Well done, girls. Well done, uh, the Colonel and uh, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Doctors warn that childhood obesity in the UK has reached alarming levels, with up to a third class as dangerously fat. They claim that Britain has become the fat kid of Europe. British girls aged under 20 are the fattest in, a, fattest in a league table, which covers 22 nations in Western Europe, while British boys under 20 are in 10th place. You've got to try harder, boys. Come on. You're letting the side down. Dr Hilary Cass... I wonder if she's any relation. Or male. Remember Hilary Jones? Oh, oh, boys with girls' names. Shirley Crabtree. <laughs> Sorry? What are you laughing at? Is that a boy? Yeah, yeah. Big Daddy. It was Big Daddy. He's a wrestler. He'd have you for that. He would totally do a daddy splat. Surely not. Oh. Big Daddy killed a man, didn't he? No. I think he did. I think he, did. he daddy splatted a man to death. Well, you better make sure of your facts before you start saying stuff like that. You're the producer. You'll go down with me. Well. Did the other guy laugh at his name? No, he daddy's black. I'm sure. Have I got this right? Didn't Big Daddy, who was a British legend, this was in the days when wrestlers were just fat blokes. My great grand used to love watching that. I my bet nana. She did. Yeah, come on as muck, isn't it? Oh yeah, on a Saturday afternoon. I would love to have gone to a proper British wrestling, and I never was never allowed to. Big Daddy, giant haystacks, Kendo Nagasaki. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Big Daddy Daddy splattered a man to death. Okay, let me just see. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double um, five. Hulk Hogan once. It doesn't count. That's not real wrestling. That's pretend. Yeah. He, he doesn't know that he was in my selfie though. What? Stood in front of him. I miss proper wrestling. Proper wrestling where there were men in leotards and it was it was old women with handbags and um, and brollies, giving them a good slapping and a good punching. Shirley Crabtree, former rugby league player for league club Bradford Northern, never made an appearance with the first teams due to his fiery temper, often forcing how him did, to leave the pitch early. How did the Big Daddy chant go? Don't know. Wasn't it, um... Oh. Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy... Wasn't it that? I imagine something similar. I think that was the Big Daddy chant. I think it went... Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy. Yeah. In August 1987, Big Daddy's career was blighted by tragedy after a turn there of events go. during the final moments of a tag team match, yep. pitting him and his nephew, Steve Crabtree, billed as Greg Valentine. Oh, he's oh. one of them, was he? Pretty boy. Oh. Against King Kong Kirk and King Kendo. After Big Daddy delivered his splash kings, and scored the winning pinfall, rather than selling the impact of the finishing move, Kirk turned an unhealthy colour oh. and was rushed to a nearby hospital, pronounced dead on arrival. You're Aye. right. Despite the fact that the inquest into Kirk's death found that he'd had a serious his heart condition, it cleared Crabtree of any responsibility. Oh, Crabtree was devastated. I bet he was. I bet he was the gentle giant. He was the good guy against uh, giant haystacks bad guy. Isn't it funny? Of all the stuff we've talked about, the phones have gone mental because we're talking about big wrestling. Daddy. Yeah, big daddy. Oh, wait, 455 five, four, double, five, five, double, five. Why did old ladies love it so much in the 80s? They did, didn't it? Yeah. Didn't they? Yeah. They did. I don't know. Meet odds. Because, I mean, it wasn't the sexy look. It was the days before the Chippendales, though, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's all you could get. The, the, the w women weren't catered for in that respect. Proper fella. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. We, we can do. We can uh, go down uh, Big Daddy's memory lane if you'd uh, you'd like to discuss that. You can also text eight one three double three. Start your text three. See up. Let's get the travel. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M1 southbound, it's very slow after the accident earlier at Junction 14 for Milton Keynes, and there's queues still from the Newport Pagnell services. In Dunstable, on the A5, it's queuing because the traffic lights are out at the Houghton Parade. That's causing queues on all the approaches to there. In Tame, on the A418 Aylesbury Road, it's looking very slow on the speed sensors at Kingsley Road, and in on the M25 anti-clockwise, it's queuing between Junction 21A for St Albans and Junction 16 for the M40. Also around there on the A40 Western Avenue. It's queuing eastbound between the Swakeleys Roundabout and the Gypsy Corner. No reports though of any problems at the moment on the train. Samantha Ruff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much indeed. Someone's just tweeted, I'm going to do a daddy splat all on you. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. I may have got the big daddy chant wrong. We'll find out what it is after the news with Simon. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio.
It's eight o'clock. The headlines. Former Milton Keynes mayor resigns as councillor. Man charged with rape in Bedford takeaway. And Wickham's hopes of top spot go for a Burton. BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes former mayor Subhan Shafiq has resigned as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. An internal council report states that from now on, anyone on the sex offenders register will not be granted a taxi licence. These taxi drivers in Milton Keynes have welcomed the former mayor's decision. What he was doing was wrong, see, because he did not even know the person. He said uh, it's okay for him to drive a taxi. Well, I think he should have stood down a long time ago. I think he should have stood down as soon as the incidents came to light, when the media and the press got hold of it. A man will appear in court today charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford. The woman in her 20s was attacked at the branch in Tavistock Street on Friday night between 10 to 10 and 11.15. 38-year-old Masej Andrezik of no fixed address has been remanded in custody. Luton-based airline EasyJet has reported a 21.5% rise in annual profits. EasyJet has posted a pre-tax profit of £581 million for the year ended September. September. The Inspectorate of Constabulary says the police are still failing to record a significant proportion of the crimes reported to them. Its report says nearly 20% of alleged offences and more than a quarter of complaints of sex offences are not recorded in the official figures. The Home Secretary has described the failings as utterly unacceptable. A woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. Janet Bowles from Great Hormead near Buntingford says that by the time paramedics arrived, her son had lost consciousness. It follows another case highlighted on this programme yesterday, but Unison regional organiser Tim Roberts says the union is confident things will improve. Staggeringly, actually. The Trust is, is saying that it's um, it's short of between 500, um, uh, five and 600 front lines. So, I mean, that, that's, the, that's the, the scale of the problem it's facing at the moment. But it's confident and we, we, we've seen the plan. Bedfordshire Police have released details of an attack on a pregnant girl who was pulled to the ground and kicked in the stomach outside her Luton home. Four men attacked the 18-year-old as she was walking home in Rudyard Court on Friday afternoon, October the 31st. A passing motorist took her to a police station. A hospital checkup confirmed her baby was unharmed. A four-year-old girl and her father have been pulled alive from the rubble of a gas explosion which completely destroyed their house in Southampton. Both have now been released from hospital. In sport, Wickham missed the chance to return to the top of League Two last night. Gareth Ainsworth side lost 3-1 to Burton at Adams Park. They were just off it and it's going to happen. It's, it wasn't our night. Uh, I'm not too keen on midweeks at the moment. We, that's, that's the only time we get beat and uh, kept, me, kept me back to Saturdays any day. We're third in the league still and at this stage of the season no one would have expected that. Tonight it's Scotland versus England in a friendly in Glasgow, the first clash between the two sides in Scotland since 1999. The weather, a generally cloudy day with isolated showers at times, some sunny intervals this afternoon, a maximum temperature 11 degrees Celsius and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. In a country market town in Buckinghamshire. Telling everyone about where you you live. Local rugby club and that type of thing. It's, it's quite an interesting place, really. I quite enjoy living here. All this week, we're exploring Chesham. Everybody that lives here absolutely loves the place. I'm full of characters. I love Chesham! The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Nice to hear the Bet sisters on the radio. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. And I don't like it very much. Oh, no, oh, no. He swallowed my toe, he swallowed my toe. Oh, gee, oh, gee. He's up to my knee, he's up to my knee. Oh, fiddle, oh, fiddle. He's reached my middle, he's reached my middle. Morning, guys. Morning, itchy heads. Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Councillors stepping down. 
Ambulance is not stepping up. And Dealey stepping out. Yeah, I did it. I did it. 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. The thing is, Boyle, yeah. booby traps on this door don't work because this door pushes out. Also, Kelly Betts was going to come in. Also, JVS is going to come in. You cannot booby trap my studio doors. Whereas what booby your... trap? Yeah, exactly. The one that I heard when Kelly came in, I heard it go and I heard her giggle and stumble. <laughs> and I said, has, has Catherine booby trapped it? And she said, yes. And there's, there it is, the vacuum cleaner. The Hungry Horace. What's it called? A big mouthful. What do they call that? Henry. A Henry. That's it. A, a hot Henry. <laughs> I, I did not do anything with the hoover. No, this is a booby trap. Look, I'm getting a hoover put on me. There we go. Now, that is, <laughs> that is a booby trap. I've got a, a hemry round my neck. Not one of them for ages. Anyway, the big daddy chant. Yes. You got it wrong. What did you think it was? Big daddy, 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 big daddy. Daddy, big 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 daddy. You're such a plum. Was it that? No, it was oh. easy, 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 and so on. I'm glad we got that sorted. That was from Alan and Wellin, uh, the, the Craig the Ledge, uh, <laughs> and Gareth in Lower Stondon. So sort it out, Lee. Uh, just wanted to respond to your immigration text, says Damon. He says, I'm of Anglo-Irish descent and have to say the mini-boom in the economy of recent times is part due to women and men who've immigrated here and are doing jobs lazy nationals would not do for effort or skill. Fact. Also, the people... Chew on that, says Damon. The people doing the really horrible, dirty, crappy jobs in uh, the hospitals, do you guess where they're from? Probably not here. Phil says, I saw Big Daddy in giant haystacks. Boastful. So boastful. <laughs> At our local sports centre in the late 1980s, the old ladies were going mental. <laughs> I got thrown out for throwing a polo mint, says Phil. That could interfere with the game. <laughs> and Dave said... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Yeah? Poor ambulance of our arrival time, old people not having sex, perverted cab drivers, get the cab drivers to drive old people to hospital... <laughs> And give the ambulance drivers a well-earned break. Dave, that's not the idea. Not helpful. Barbara's um, in, in more serious matters. Barbara, I apologise you have to come on after that nonsense. What have you got for us, my dear? Oh, well, I was listening to your programme earlier. Thank you. About the lady who had to wait for an ambulance for her child. Yeah. Who was uh, ill. And um, <clears throat> just... I thought I'd mention that uh, they, the ambulance people were probably in a queue at Lister Hospital because um, about three weeks ago I went to the QE2 in Wellington City, A&E, which no longer exists. I didn't realise that. They couldn't deal with me and I was sent to Lister. And when we got to Lister, I had an excellent um, ambulance driver who only just managed to get into the park by nearly hitting other ambulances. Oh. There were so many. But he was able to get me inside the um, corridor of the hospital where I was in a queue. Oh. Now, all the, all, every, everybody in the queue, obviously, had an ambulance and two paramedics with them. So after we'd been there a few minutes, I said, well, why don't you go back to work, you know? You're on our ambulance bed, they said. So I said, well, can't you put me onto a hospital trolley bed or something, or, or even a wheelchair? Uh, no, there aren't any. So they were there. As far as I know, it was over an hour and a half. I think it was about an hour, nearly an hour and three quarters. So an hour and three quarters, and, and then you, did you finally get seen, Barbara? Uh, I, got, I got seen. Uh, well, I was put onto a, um, a little cubicle bed, yeah. whereupon the medics could 
para, two mar, paramedics and the ambulance could go. And then I was on that bed for an hour before somebody came in. Oh the, the staff were excellent. I won't say anything about the staff. Well, the, the, Barbara, I've got to move on just because we're running out of time and I've got another guest. But yes, the, the, the staff generally in these situations, the paramedics, the, 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 the hospital staff generally, generally are excellent. But the system seems to be failing. And I wonder what we can do. 08459 four double five five double five. Sorry to cut you short, but we've got a lot to squeeze in. Milton Keynes' former mayor, Subhan Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. It follows months of pressure and comes straight after an internal audit report questioned his actions. Mr Shafiq has, had already resigned as mayor, but wrote a resignation letter saying he would no longer be a councillor. Well, our reporter, Justin Dealey, has been speaking to taxi drivers in Milton Keynes this morning. Well, Paul, first of all, Give us your reaction to the fact that Mr Shafiq has now resigned as a local councillor here. Yeah, I mean, the guy didn't really have to... He, he had to go, really. He, he was uh, backed into a corner and he had to go, and what he did wasn't right. All the taxi drivers here talking about the further checks that you're going to have to go through now. Do you think, eventually, the public's faith can be restored in taxi drivers? I think so, Milton Keynes. It was hopefully an isolated incident, um, but... Yeah, I think, on the whole, things are going to be OK, yeah. Well, Frank, Mr Shafiq has now resigned as a councillor. Um, you're working here as a taxi driver. Give us your reaction. Should have gone when it started. Council have dragged their heels on this for long enough and they're just trying to cover their own back. And we're all suffering because of it, because of people. The council should have got off their backside and got rid of these people. You say that you're suffering. How are you suffering here? Well, because people are getting the wrong idea. This chap that they're talking about wasn't a taxi driver, he's a private hire driver. He didn't come down here, he didn't work here. So why are we being interviewed by TV people and everybody else, he wasn't a taxi driver. Mm. He was a private hire driver. There's a total difference. Mm, but to the public, they'll still see that as the same thing. Absolutely, but this council have dragged their heels. They should have got rid of these people straight away when they mucked everything up. And it's their fault, not ours. And um, just lastly, very quick word on, on the new checks you're having to go through. Like many drivers here, you're, you're not happy, are you? No, I'm not, because all the council are trying to do is cover their own backs for the mistakes that they've made. We've all had these checks. They're coming on the radio saying, oh, we're bringing in these checks to reassure the public. We have these checks anyway. Well, listening to that is Edith Bolt, Tory leader of Milton Keynes uh, uh, Council. Good morning, Edith. Oh, good morning. Your reaction to Mr Shafiq's resignation? Well, I'm really pleased. I agree with the taxi drivers we've just listened to. He should have done it back in August. The information was really clear even in August, and it's taken three months to get the right decision. Uh, It has taken uh, months for him to resign, and only after an internal audit report highlighted um, some of his... Well, I don't want to say lies, but there was certainly conflicting evidence, wasn't there? Certainly was, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's quite uncomfortable reading, the the, the report, the the part of the report that relates to Mr Shafiq. It's very uncomfortable reading. You know, I'm I'm really disappointed that other councillors have made such dreadful mistakes. I've been a councillor for three years, and I take my job very seriously. I just cannot understand how anybody, given the information that was before the committee, could have made, could have granted a licence, to be honest. Um, so I'm very glad that Councillor Shafiq has gone. Um, but the audit report is also uh, very clear that other councillors made mistakes. And there's one councillor, Councillor Burke, who, according to the report, he still doesn't accept responsibility for the mistakes he made in um, at the second hearing, in deciding to give Mr Keane, the convicted rapist, his uh, licence back. I just cannot understand it. Do you think Mr Burke needs to, to stand down now? Well, I think he really needs to examine his conscience, and if it was me, I, I, I would stand down. Added to the fact he was actually chair of licensing at the time and chair of the subcommittee that considered uh, the um, revocation of a licence and decided to give Mr Keane his licence back. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty clear he made a dreadful mistake as a councillor. Um, you're there to make uh, decisions on behalf of the public and take responsibility. It really is a very serious job that you, uh, you carry out on behalf of the public, and Councillor Burke got it wrong. So. We've got comments from uh, Councillor Douglas McCall, Lib Dem Group Leader. Just, just have a listen to this. After reflecting on the Council's internal report, Subhan has chosen to resign. I fully support and welcome his decision. 
Councillors have only had the full report today and therefore have needed to reflect on the content. It's clear that mistakes were made and action is required. The Liberal Democrat, the Liberal Democrat Group is considering the report and its implications and we're providing a further statement uh, later on. The Councillor McCall, of course, stood by Mr Shafiq throughout this whole thing, didn't he? Was he, he wrong did. to do he, so? He kept saying that he was waiting for the audit report and... Um, but to me, it wasn't rocket science. It was pretty clear from the outset that big mistakes had been made. So I do think that Douglas uh, McCall did display a very poor leadership, and I've said that publicly uh, before. Uh, leaders are supposed to be there to act on behalf of the group, and um, he took out a very defensive position, which I thought was inappropriate and been proved, proved right, according to the rules. Should, mis- should uh, Mr McCall step down? Well... Um, that's up to him. You know, he's in a position of leadership. Leadership, to me, means that you do lead and you take responsibility for your own councillors. Um, I can speak for myself as leader of Conservatives. I would feel very um, uncertain about my own position if I was uh, Douglas. That's all I can say, really. So you do think he should, uh, uh, if not step down, at least seriously consider that that, uh, option? I do think he should consider it, yeah. Edith, I appreciate your time this morning. Edith Ball, Tory leader of Milton Keynes uh, Council, 08459 455 555. Let's get the travel. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. We've heard from a caller that it's queuing on all the approaches to the Houghton Parade in Dunstable because of the traffic lights not working there at the A5 High Street North. On the M1 southbound, it's looking slow on speed sensors between Junction 11 for Dunstable Road and Junction 10 for the Luton Airport Spur Road, but it's easing off though on the M1 southbound through Junction 14 for Milton Keynes after the accident there earlier on. Having a look at the cameras on the A1M southbound, it's looking very slow at Junction 7 for Stevenage and the M25 anti-clockwise is queuing between Junction 21 1A for St Albans and Junction 16 for the M40. Just near there as well on the A40 Western Avenue is queuing eastbound between the Swakley's Roundabout and the Gypsy Corner. As there reports though of any problems on the train, Samantha Braff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Well thanks a lot Catherine. What? You doing the easy, easy chant we've lost listeners. Well, you started it with Big Daddy, yeah. Big Daddy, People Big wanted to... Daddy, Big what? Daddy, Big Daddy Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy Big Daddy, Big Daddy Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy. Yeah, I got listeners, and then you lost them by going, easy, 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 easy. Well, let's stop doing it then. All right, yeah, fair point. 8.17, it's Tuesday the 18th of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes, former Mayor Subban Shafiq, has resigned as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who granted a taxi driver licence, who was granted a taxi driver licence. A woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited for an over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. Every weekday from 12, Nick Coffer brings you... The wickedly funny Anne on on Strictly Come Dancing. (laughs) Do you know who the real Anne is? Great guests. Yes, the real Anne is an amalgam of all these things. We're all multifaceted. Jasper Carrot's career spans five decades. And then you had to wear a bow tie and you had to do jokes about silly Irishmen and and, and mother-in-laws. John Cleese is eating his microphone, aren't you, John Cleese? Mm. Great music. Ow! In fact, I don't even think it had the horn part then. Great conversation. I always have said throughout my career, you know, you get me on board, I'll give you 100%. Have you still got it, Billy Ocean? Well, the audience seems to think I have. Nick Coffer, weekdays from 12 How on can... BBC oh, Three Counties Radio. Finished. Yep. How come I can hear that dog whistle you just blew? I thought we weren't supposed to hear them as humans. Am I a dog? Well, do you know, it's rather interesting because I went to buy my my dog whistle, which yeah. sounds like... The, I apologise for anyone who's got a dog go on, listening this morning because all dogs all over beds, hearts and bucks, you wait. Yeah. They'll, they'll come running to Luton now. Yeah, what is it? I can hear that. I shouldn't be able to hear yes, it. Yes, I know. Well, when I went to buy it... That's the, just a whistle, mate. The lady said, what tone do you want? And I said, what? 
And she said, well, there's all different tones. Oh, for goodness sake. So she said, I said, well, I don't know. She said, well, I'll give you a 210. That's uh, Is that a 210? I thought, I thought it was a 211, but OK, 210, yeah. She said, you want a 210? That's the most popular one. I think uh, most people get on well with a 210. What's, I, I want the one where you can't hear it as a human being. But isn't that a bit of a myth? I don't, I'm not no. sure that there is a dog whistle that you can't hear. All the ones I've heard you can hear. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just analyse that sentence. Well, yeah, all, all the ones you've heard, yeah, you but, can hear, correct? Yes. But when you, uh, you, you know, I, I live in the country, yeah, and people have dog whistles. They they walk around with dog whistles yeah. around their around their necks, yeah. and sometimes they blow them in the pub if yeah. their if their dog has gone off. Yes. they blow them. Gosh. You always hear. Don't them. You hang out with fun people. Yeah, the ones you hear, you hear. <laughs> but what about the ones you haven't heard? <laughs> You could be walking through yeah, but, the woods but, but, and there could be hundreds of dog whistles going off, but, you just don't know. Well, possibly, but in the pub you don't see people kind of going <laughs> and nothing coming out. I, I don't know, because I don't go to those kind of pubs where boring men blow whistles. Right. <laughs> so basically, you're, you've got dog training today. Yeah. You're going to be stood in the middle of the woods <laughs> shouting, Come! 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 Yes. Gosh. That's it. Wowzers. I'm uh, I'm struggling to turn left. That's my problem at the moment. Oh, I'm not very good at my left turns. No, you'll be okay. You have you, to, you, who'd have thought that it was complicated? Dogs. Walking a dog. Have you? As the, the dog's a boy, is it? No, it's a girl. Oh. You've shown absolutely no interest in my dog whatsoever. I'm not. You don't like her. I don't. You hate her. I, I don't hate her. Hate is a very strong word, but yeah, I don't like her at all. I'm going to train her to bite you. For goodness sakes. Savvy. Kill. Yes. See him off, oh, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is what I expected from you. She'll you? have your leg. Yeah, <laughs> she'll have that. <laughs> the dog bites me, I'm going to put my finger up its bum. <clears throat> That's what you're meant to do. What? That's what you're meant to do. A dog bites you, put your finger up its bum, instantly releases. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, don't put, no, do not do that to my dog, will you? We'll tell it not to bite me. <laughs> What's on your show this morning? I'll try to. What a surreal conversation in the morning. You started it. Coming up on this morning's big phone-in, do you get a good or bad service from your doctor's surgery? It's all over the front pages of the papers today. Health Watchdog, the Care Quality Commission, has inspected and reviewed doctor surgeries across the country, yeah. and today they've published the results online. Fantastic. They haven't done mine yet. Oh. First thing I did, I went on to check if they don't mind. They hadn't done mine. Yeah. One in six surgeries have been identified as providing care that was in need of improvement, whilst more than one in ten have been categorised as highest concern. The CQC say too many patients are enduring chaotic and potentially unsafe care, whilst others struggle to get an appointment at all. Politicians now say that doctors who repeatedly fail patients will be punished. Well, from nine this morning, I'd like your or your personal reaction to this based on your experience. Do you get a good or a bad service from your doctor's surgery? I'd love your call from nine. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Do you get a good or bad service from Excellent your doctor? For mine. Yes. When I went in last week, the other week when I was off sick and I, I went in, I said, I need to get a sick note. Uh, and they did said, you need to have a sick note? What did you need a sick note just, for? Just to keep everything, all bases covered. Right. And they said, come back in an hour. Did you have to pay for it? Thanks very much. No. They gave I don't, it I don't really free. understand the world of sick notes, but no, they did. I didn't. Really? I, I give it 12 minutes, 12 minutes before someone phones up on your show and says it's to do with the immigrants that we get poor service in doctors. 12 minutes. Oh. Little sweepstake, you in? OK. Five pounds? Mm. Yeah, you in? Five Three. pounds? Three. Three fifty? Three Don't 50. fix it so that they come on later. Don't fix it. Three fifty. Like you BBC types do. Do you get a good or bad service from your doctor? I just told you a good one. Yeah. Just told you. Oh, you're asking the listener. I'm listening. Sorry, to, yeah, that was out of order. Believe it or not, I'm I'm Sorry. interested in more views than just yours. That was out of order. Sorry. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Quite good, actually. Yeah. Quite the, good. Uh, your your doctor's surgery as well. Yeah, I don't know he's, who my doctor is, but I always see one. He's not asking us. He's not asking us. It's he's true. Asking the I don't know. All, all every oh, time because I used to have. He's engaging with you. Lovely old yeah. doctors, yeah. like old men. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they've all right. retired. Okay. I've got a guest. Got a guest lined there up. There was always one woman. I I would always actually, say I don't want her. Yeah, I've got a guest lined up. Sometimes mate. I want a woman though. If you know, if it's a. Right, I've got... Right. Problem. You... Go, how about we go to this conversation next door? Go and engage Well, from, from nine. We'll do it from nine. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Three Counties Radio. Have we lost any more listeners since uh, your chant? There's some... Uh, some listeners are incensed, but they're not listening anymore. They're, they're so what? They're talking to them. They're incensed. Oh, right. And um, we've also got... I've had a text message, from, a personal text message from my friend Nick, female Nick. Hello, Lady Nick. 
Lucy, she's got two children, Lucy and Jake. Lucy's now Strong chanting names. Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Good for Big you, Lucy. Daddy. Like that. And Jake is chanting Easy, uh, Easy, Easy. Not so keen on him. Apparently, it's a war in the car and not easier on my delicate morning ears. Oh, Cheers, good. guys. Cheers, guys. Now, the East of England Ambulance Service was fined one and a half million pounds for poor response and turnaround times. And it would seem from the people we've spoken to, things haven't really improved. Yesterday, Rebecca told, uh, hold up, told us. She's complained so far without response after ambulances turned up late or not at all when her baby had seizures that stopped him breathing. And earlier on, we heard from Janet in Hertfordshire. Well, joining me now is Peter Blackman. He's a member of the Regional Community First Responders. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Ian. Uh, Does this come as a surprise to you? Um, Well, I I can't obviously talk about an individual case, um, but what I can say is that obviously um, there are different standards for different types of calls and um, some some people will get uh, a very quick response and some people will perhaps get a slower response because it's all depending upon the seriousness of the call. So immediately life-threatening calls are given priority. Oh, of course. um, And then others which uh, which uh, uh, aren't so immediately life-threatening have to wait a bit longer. You would have so thought a 10-month-old ten, a ten baby uh, having a seizure and fitting, though, that would be pretty high up on the list, wouldn't it? Well, it's very interesting that, you see. It, it does depend. Um, in some cases, that would be very serious, but in others, not. Oh. Um, it does depend upon the individual circumstances. So, say, for argument's sake, you had um, a, a, a situation where there was something regular going on and there were... I, the, per, the point is that when somebody phones in, um, their call is... They're asked a series of questions which enable the system to categorise the call. So a, a brief description um, doesn't necessarily tell the whole picture. Um, and clearly, we do need to prioritise those who are immediately life-threatening. Now, everybody who rings 999 thinks that their emergency is the most important that's going on at the time, and that's absolutely understandable. But the system does have to prioritise things. And there are times when what sounds like... Uh, when it's briefly described, when you actually go into it a bit further, um, it does turn out that it gets downgraded. It's interesting, you see, the ambulance service, every time you start a call to the ambulance service through 999, it starts off as the highest priority, a red one. And then it can get, it slowly as the questions get answered, yeah. it, it may be recoded. And um, a call like the one you're describing could be anything from a red one to a green two. Do, do we need a higher number? Numbers of staffing? Are there there problems with numbers of paramedics and people working in the emergency service? Well, it's well known that the East of England Ambulance Service has has had some issues and it is uh, addressing those very quickly and a lot of good recruitment's gone on. Unfortunately, you can't turn new recruits into fully qualified paramedics overnight, so we know it's going to take time. But the performance of the Ambulance Trust is steadily improving and you've got to remember that the, the standard that they're missing is one of getting to the red one calls within eight minutes. And, OK, it's missing that by about uh, somewhere between, around about 1%. Uh, uh, um, uh, but the ones that it's missing, it's only missing by literally half a minute. So it's not we're not missing this target by huge no. amounts at this stage. Um, and people generally are getting the ambulance in the time. You see, some calls might need a, a response in eight minutes, some in about 17 minutes, some in one one hour, some in four hours. So it does all depend on the seriousness of the call. And the overall performance is is definitely improving. Peter, that's good to hear. Uh, Just go off on a very slight tangent. I'm so sorry. Has anyone ever said to you, you sound remarkably like Kelvin McKenzie, the newspaper man? (laughs) <laughs> Has that ever been pointed out before? No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but, but, but feel free. The other thing that I have to say to you is that I've got, I've got my trainee guide dog puppy with me beside oh. me, and, 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 and when, when you blew your whistle, she didn't react, but that oh. could be because I had the cans on and she didn't. Well, that's, that's good, but also that because I guess that that has to be trained out of the, uh, the, the guide dog puppy, so, so that, would, that would imply no, that actually, she's going to be a good you- one. 
Uh, well, no, but interestingly, we do use the whistle because if ah. you're blind and standing in the middle of a field wanting to get your dog back, they do use the whistle because we use food associations, so our dogs aren't allowed to eat until we've blown the whistle. So, Peter, and that's why I've got very good recall with my dog. Can I ask, Peter, and if you don't want to answer, then please don't, does that mean that you are, you are visually impaired and this is your puppy, or you are, you are sighted and you are training the puppy? I, I'm sighted, right. I'm, I'm a trainer, I'm wow. a puppy walker, and I have them from seven weeks until they're about a year. And in fact, this puppy, it's her semi... We're just going off to do something on BBC Essex, and then later on she's going to big school because she's, she's, she's now adult, and she's going off to do the rest of her training, and hopefully in about five or six months' time she'll be working with a blind person. Do you not feel sad when you... You know, because that, that dog has lived with you for almost a year. Do you, obviously it's off to, going off to do great work, but do you not kind of miss it when it goes? Yes, it's not the best day of the week, but she's going oh. off to do a great job. And she's the 10th that we've had, the 11th back at home. We can have another one to tear the house up. Oh, um, yeah. and, uh, um, um, uh, and, but our job is to get them from seven weeks up to a year old, teach them the basics so that they can go on to stage two and stage three and do the fantastic work that they do. Well, Peter, good for you. Thank you very much. That was an interesting little... Uh tangent you see everybody's got got something you know up their sleeve not obviously a, a puppy that would be crazy uh, peter blackman member of the regional community first responders and he trains guide dogs thank you peter travel news for beds cards and bugs bbc three counties radio in Dunstable, the A5 High Street North is queuing because the traffic lights have failed at Houghton Road, so that's causing it to be very slow on all the approaches to the Houghton Parade. On the M1 southbound, it's looking very slow between Junction 11 for Dunstable Road and Junction 10 for the Luton Airport Spur Road on the speed sensors. And in Aston Clinton on the A41 westbound, it's looking very slow between the Woodlands Roundabout and the Esso Garage Mini Roundabout. In High Wycombe on the A404 northbound, it's queuing towards the High Wycombe Handycross Roundabout. And having a look at the M25, Five on the cameras. It's queuing between Junction 20 for Kings Langley and 16 for the M40. Also looking very busy in Brickett Wood on the North Orbital Road at the M25 Junction 21A roundabout. Having a look on the A1M southbound and it's still looking very slow through Junction 7 for Stevenage. But there's no reports of any problems on the trains. Samantha Breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Samantha. Excellent email from Dennis Barnes. Dennis, good morning, Mr Barnes. Barnesy is enjoying the show. He sent me a very complimentary email. I shall read it after the news. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. With the headlines, I'm Simon Oxley. Taxi drivers in Milton Keynes have welcomed the resignation of former Mayor Subban Shafiq as a councillor following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. Luton-based airline EasyJet has reported a 21.5% rise in annual profits to £581 million. A man will appear in court today charged with raping a woman in the toilets of a KFC in Bedford on Friday night and a woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Wickham missed the chance to return to the top of League Two after a 3-1 defeat by fellow promotion hopefuls Burton at Adams Park last night. Paul Hayes scored for the Wanderers from the penalty spot. His manager Gareth Ainsworth. A couple of good things, but uh, a lot of bad things, and, and we'll have to work on that. Put it right on Saturday at Cheltenham. Fans were great, got right behind us, and, and I could feel them wanting that second goal. You know, and I think Hogan had a chance at 2-1, and if that goes in, it's a different game. But that's football, and that's where we are. But fair play to Burton. They come, worked really hard, took the chances and went on with the points. And the result means Luton stay top of League Two. The Hatters go to Burton on Saturday. Also last night in Conference South, St Albans lost 3-2 at home to Farnborough. Tonight it's Scotland versus England in a friendly at Celtic Park in Glasgow. The first clash between the two sides in Scotland since 1999. England captain Wayne Rooney says it'll be a special occasion. It's going to be a great atmosphere, obviously. Played here in Champions League games. I've been to watch games here in the Champions League as well and it's really a great place to play and I'm sure the, the Scotland fans will be, be loud. 
we've got 5,000 fans coming over, so it will be a, a good atmosphere and hopefully for the 5,000 fans it'll be a good day. The chairman of the Football Association, Greg Dyke, has written to FIFA's top executives demanding a report into alleged World Cup corruption is published in full. And in darts, the world's top players are heading to Milton Keynes in the new year with the Masters tournament moving to the arena at Stadium MK. The likes of Phil Taylor and reigning world champion Michael Van Gerwen will be in Milton Keynes on Saturday, January the 31st and Sunday, February the 1st for the televised event. BBC Three Counties News and Sports. The next full bulletin is at nine. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Dennis Barnes. Morning, Mr Barnes. Please, may I... Lovely email. Thank you for your kind words. Please, may I say, I know that you're having some trouble filling your show with lack of interaction with the listeners, but it is getting more and more unbearable to listen to your show while I wait for the JVS show starts. (laughs) It is getting embarrassing to listen as you make an attempt to fill your show. Roll on 9am. I've been so put off by your silly antics, and no, not all response is good. Oh. Why is he embarrassed? I th- sorry, I totally misread that. I thought he was bigging us up, but he's actually smalling us down, isn't I, he? I've got. Um, he's I've, dissing us. I've got a nice one though. Go on. Anne. Um, Morning, Anne. Anne is in Albans, who emails us every day. Um, how on earth can you debase the show by this rubbish? Debase it. What? As if normally it's flipping it higher. This is all because you did the easy chant. No, you started it. Rose says, "Stop with the easy, Big Daddy, for heaven's sake! Just read the news or something." Read the news. Dennis is in Dunstable. Morning, Dennis. Are you going to phone up and have a go at us, Dennis? No, I haven't oh. been having a go at you for the last few days because you've been too soft. Sorry? I could, what? You've been too soft. You've nothing to argue with you over the last few days. All right. I can, I'll, 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 I can argue with you. I know, but I was, oh. this is about... Rest- turn your telly off, you plum. Win- Winifred, turn the television down, will you, please? Oh, we gave her a Winifred then, masterful. Well, no, because I get it. If I call her Winifred, I get attention. Yeah. If What's I call she her watching? anything else, she, she, she doesn't like Winifred. Yeah, call yeah. her Fred. She's not doing it, though, is she, Dan? Call her Fred. Dennis, what is she watching? Uh, news at the moment, I think. Yes, it's news. Is it Lorraine Kelly? No, no, no. It's the morning news, anyway. Somebody, it looks as though he's in uh, somewhere up north. Glasgow. He's in Glasgow. Oh. OK. Well, could you turn her to turn, tell her to turn the telly off, then? Sounds Will you turn the telly down, Mrs Brooke, please? Tell us to put Channel 3 on, ITV. It's not on. It's well, not. I can hear it. Well, it's not on. Well, I can hear it. Well, you must be. I must have exceptional hearing because there's no sound coming out of the telly at all. all. Right, sh- 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 Stop talking. Now then, Wait, oh, shush, shush, wrestling. Shush. Well, she has turned. Yeah, off. she has. All right, off. I'll give you that. Go on then. Fair play. Right, wrestling. Yes. I asked Catherine, did she ever go to Bellevue, Manchester, wrestling? Saturday nights, it was absolutely fabulous. Beautiful. Two hours of throwing people about, and they were, they were all friends because they used to go boozing afterwards together. But everybody, there was one who was very a fellow called Mac Manners. Everybody Manus. hated him. Hated him, and he was a nice bloke. And then there was a young lad called, I think he called himself the Young Hercules. A nice-looking lad he was. But they were having a wrestling match one night, and this Hercules got McManus by the neck. And just for a second, the sound died away, and a little girl's voice right from the back of the audience shouted, Go on, tear his bloody head off! <laughs> oh, it just collapsed in laughter. And that little child... Grew up to me. Me, Catherine Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> Commoners Muck. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> what, why, what, was the, what was the fascination with watching fat men in swimming trunks and uh, leotards well, the, pretending to fight each other? Well, it was. They, 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 were, they were doing the impossible. They were doing impossible things. And Mac Manners, particularly, uh, was hated, <laughs> loved and hated by the audience because he broke every rule in the wrestling calendar. Dennis, thank you very much indeed. The thing I don't get about wrestling. British or American is, those referees really don't do an excellent job because they'll be so busy taking one re- wrestler to, to the, they're like a tag team, right? One wrestler will be taken to the side to be given a stern telling off. He can't see what's going on behind uh, him. There's a and girl the with others, a guitar or a yeah, stool. A stool, they'll come and smack. The others will be, be there'll be a big fight going on behind him, breaking all the rules. The American re- uh, wrestling referees don't do that thing though, do they? Where they go, one, nah! Two, uh, They've got no class. Three, uh. There's a fella called, um, I think his name, the American wrestling guy, called um, Papa Shanga. Oh, really? He was a voodoo man. Oh. Right. And I don't know, I mean... Is and he this, doing wrestling? I thought they were healers. Well, he did, he had a top hat. Have I, have I got this? I don't really know a lot about American wrestling, but I do know Papa Shanga, right? And he had a top hat, and he'd come on and he'd do voodoo. If he was losing the fight, he'd do voodoo, right? And this is, must be real magic, because I don't, I, mean, I don't know how you fake this. And what would happen is, the lights in the arena would go out. He'd what? do his voodoo, the lights would go out, 
for like five seconds, the lights would come on and the opponent would be on the floor in a lot of pain. Oh. Now, I don't know, is, is voodoo... I don't know what the rules of wrestling dictate. It, are, are voodoo... Is voodoo within the rules? Well, um... It's above the belt, I guess, isn't it? I, well, I suppose so. It's, 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 it's above us all in many ways, um, isn't it? I don't know. Papa Shango. Papa Shango, I'm being told. Thank you. What I really love is when they bounce off the, wi- off the ropes. Yeah. Dorm, dorm, dorm. Smack. You, the man goes down. Smack down. And then, as he's standing up and looking dazed and moving his head slowly from side to side and looking like he doesn't know what day it is, yeah. someone else is creeping up behind him. Yeah. Oh, you know you're going to get it. I, um... I, uh, you know, I wrestled a listener once. I heard about that. Yeah, I did rest- you ever get done for that one? No, no, no. Uh, it went on for flipping ages. This was I wrestled. I was uh, I wrestled a, li- a listener, and he nearly beat me in the first ten seconds. It's on YouTube. He nearly beat me in the first ten seconds. Okay, I slipped and I nearly went down. I just managed well, to get my balance. You thought it was jokes, didn't you? But he was serious. He was serious. So then it became real, and it went on for ages, like ten minute wrestling. Man. My lungs were going to burst. I beat him. Yeah. I beat him. I taught him a lesson or two. You did cry a bit, though, didn't you? I saw no, that video. I didn't cry, mate. Well, you look like you were crying. Yeah, but well, does that look like I'm crying? Would that make you cry? Oh. It's down the line. Would it? You'd have to get like that about it. Uh, Richard's on the line. Good morning, Richard. Morning. Y- you know about Papa Shanga? Uh, yeah, I, I saw Papa Shanga when I, uh, in Wembley Arena. Um, I was in year four in the junior schools. I can't remember how, how old I would have been at the time. Quite young. Um, but I remember it was the time where you had like Brett the Hitman Hart and uh, Bam Bam Bigelow, Mr. Perfect, all those sort of wrestlers. And, and did Papa the- Shango invoke any demons or, or dark forces on that, that day? Not that I remember that day, but what I do remember is um, having, a, uh, having a really good time there. And on Monday morning um, at, at school, we had to write what we'd done on the weekend. <laughs> so I, 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 I was writing all these, uh, all these names down in my book. And the teacher read it, and then um, she sent me to the back and told me off the line. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Really? She, she didn't. Be- she didn't believe me because of all like, the uh, the weird names she thought I was making it up. That's outrageous. You did you um, uh, do a clothesline on her? I should have done. It was more of a drop kick that I pulled out the bag, but yeah. Do you still? Because I, I never really got into American wrestling, and I kind of, I kind of wish that I did because it was just such ridiculous nonsense, wasn't it? Uh, well, it was. I mean, I, I, I stopped watching it um, probably from the age of sort of like uh, 10, 10, 11. Um, but it was just kind of a kid. I mean, I, I remember going, I was going to the chance. She had the big foam hands that used to sort of throw up in the air. Beautiful. That was fantastic. Richard, thank you very much. Of course, the dream fight that, that we'll never get to see now will be uh, the two, the, the world's greatest wrestlers, Big Daddy versus Hulk Hogan. That's never going to happen. Oh, Daddy would take Hogan out easy. Totally, totally. Hulk Hogan then went on and made movies, didn't he? Yeah. Trouble in Paradise. And a, a reality television show. C- w- with his family. Really? Yeah. Oof. I think they've all split up since then. Yeah, probably. John's in Datchworth. Good morning, John. Good morning. What would you like to say, sir? Uh, two or three things. First of all, I'll just change it a little bit. I'll, um, the ambulance thing. Oh, yeah, go on. Right. First is, they shut the QE2 hospital, yeah. uh, emergency, it's accident emergency, and expecting the Stevenage one to cope with it all. So obviously then the ambulances are all queued up, like that lady said earlier. So obviously if the ambulances are queued up, they're not going to be able to make any times. And to find the ambulance service is only taking money away that they could actually put more ambulances on the road if required. But- I know, I know what you're saying. And ultimately, if you're finding the ambulance service, well, then you and me are going to pay for it. Uh, but, yeah. but there has to be... They wouldn't... Use, I mean, they, the East of England ambulance service have been fined a million and a half pounds in the last year or so. But they wouldn't have used that money. They wouldn't have been buying more ambulances and more drivers with that money. And I guess if they're not up to scratch, then how would you suggest we punish them? But you're punishing them in theory because they can't leave the hospitals. What they do is just roll up, chuck someone out the back, chuck another bed in it, and off they go again. That's OK, right. then who... who like that lady said they, they were there for an hour and a half, hour yeah. and three quarters of that old lady there. Then, so then, then who, the, whose fault is it, then? It's got to be the government for closing the hospitals down, surely. I don't know. I don't know the answer to it. It's, 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 it's a big one, isn't it? You had something else you wanted to say, John? Yeah. Um, Councillor Shafiq, I know you say he's, he's resigned, Um me personally, being like the average peasant worker, if I resign, I walk away without any job, any money, or anything. Is this man resigning with a big backhander? And the other thing was, has this um, uh, taxi driver 
actually still got his licence? No, the taxi driver, uh, I, I think, Catherine, you'll be able to remind, he hasn't got his licence, has he? The, no. the serial rapist, he's lost his licence. As to whether Mr Shafiq, formerly Councillor Shafiq, formerly Mayor Shafiq, um, gets a payout, I wouldn't have thought he would have done if he'd resigned, but we'll look into it, John, and find out. OK, the only reason I queried the taxi driver's licence was because, like I said, it, it had a rethink, and they, so one of them did give his licence back at one point, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, he the, did. the serial rapist has not got his licence, so don't worry about that. There was someone else who they were trying to convince yeah. to, to do likewise. I don't think it was rape, his offence, was it? No, um, but it was, it was a dodge pot. And uh, we'll find out if Mr Shafiq gets a payout. I don't know how it works. I wouldn't have thought so if he'd resigned. I'd be surprised. But then again, do you know what? N- none of this uh, s- story has really made any sense, has it? Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Thank you to Kelly Joe, who's just posted. Uh, yes, it was confusing. When, do you remember the time when there were two WWFs, the World yes. Wrestling Federation and the World Wildlife Fund? Well, she's posted an excellent picture of two pandas wrestling, so that that joins both worlds together. So thank you for that. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Dunstable on the A5 High Street North, it's queuing because of a traffic light failure at the Houghton Road. Traffic lights is looking very busy around there at the moment. On the M1 southbound, it's looking very slow between Junction 11 for Dunstable Road and Junction 10 for Luton Airport Spur Road as well. In Kings Langley on the A41 southbound, it's very slow between Two Waters Road at the Hemel Hempstead turnoff and the M25 Junction 20 for Kings Langley. And having a look at the cameras on the M25 anti-clockwise, it's queuing between Junction 20 for Kings Langley and 16 for the M25. 40. In Brickettwood on the North Orbital Road, it's also very heavy around the M25 Junction 21A roundabout. And elsewhere in Beaconsfield on the Amersham Road, it's looking very heavy between the Ledborough Lane and London Road junctions. And in High Wycombe, the A404 northbound is queuing towards the High, Wyc- High Wycombe Handy Cross roundabout. On the trains, there's no reports of any problems at the moment. Smart the Breath, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. Eight forty six. It is Tuesday, the eighteenth of November. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Taxi drivers in Milton Keynes have welcomed the resignation of former Mayor Subban Shafiq as a councillor, following months of pressure after he vouched for a serial rapist who was granted a taxi driver licence. Luton-based airline EasyJet has reported a twenty one point five percent rise in annual profits to five hundred eighty one million pounds. And a woman from Hertfordshire whose son waited for over an hour for an ambulance says someone will die if response times don't improve. Right, let's get the weather, not with Sarah, with Kate. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. Well, we have got a bit It was of Kelly's around. fault. Oh, yeah, blame passing no, the buck. Oh, no. It's passing the buck. She, she type word on screen, <laughs> I read word on screen. I know, thank yeah. you for my selfie. <laughs> OK. Oh, uh, blimey. <laughs> right, OK, where you go? <laughs> Good morning. We have some cloud around this morning, but also some breaks in that cloud. So some blue sky already, some bright sunny spells. Is dry at the moment, but I'm just watching the showers moving in from the east. They're coming from the North Sea originally, so by the time they kind of get near us, they break up, fragment, we don't get much at all. But they are working their way down the Thames estuary, so it's possible that we may get one or two showers. It does look largely dry, though, and the temperature struggling. That easterly breeze means things are feeling quite cool. We're looking at maximum 11 Celsius. Overnight tonight, still one or two showers possible, but most places dry. Bit of mist likely, minimum temperature down to 5 Celsius. For tomorrow, more cloud, bit of sunshine developing in the afternoon but again a risk of one or two showers arriving from the east maximum temperature 11 celsius that's 52 degrees in fahrenheit and that's your forecast Every weekday morning, local opinions. Well, I think it's a very difficult uh, proposition. You really cannot l- allow your heart to rule your head. Local stories. I wanted to call my house Hardcore Mansions. They refused that on two separate occasions. I wasn't leaving the house through the fear as to what I would find when I came back. Local life. I bought a car within three months. It's rusty. They said that the deposit would be forthcoming. It wasn't. The JVS Show. Weekdays from 9 on BBC Three Counties Radio. Catherine Boyle. Yes. Have we got any Texas? Yes. Let's um, have some Texas um, before we go to Dealey. Um, oh, more, more, more show signs of support? Morning, Brenda. I wish my life away every morning waiting for 9am. Roll on, JVS. You are rubbish. OK, well, here's the thing, guys. Don't wish your life away because one day you'll be dead. So, And then you'll be wishing your life uh, back. And also, you could listen to something else. Yeah, do something. Oh, we can't.
can't be. I said that once to someone. I said, well, we can't do that because it's, it's, the radio's tuned to that your station. We'll tune it something else. I don't know how to. Read a book. Go and read a book. Go and get. Like don't have all this books. bitterness. Don't have all this bitterness. Although I think people like Brenda. To them, I am um, like I'm the pantomime villain, and yeah. they like to hate me because it gives them something, to, somewhere to direct their bitterness. It's interesting their that she's energy. listening every morning. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, there are radio shows I don't like, uh, and I don't listen to them more than twice because I go. I don't like this, and I go and do something else instead. But there are some people who are really irritating on the radio, and I listen to them just so I can um, swear and shout at the radio. JBS. And if that's your thing, then that's fine. Uh, as as um, 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 the man said, whose name I can never remember, uh, radio man, who's the radio man? Howard Stern. Yes. Uh, people who like him listen to him for 20 minutes. People who hate him listen to him for hours. Because people like to be angry. And I'm, we're doing you a service, Brenda, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Also, John in Milton Keynes. Good morning, Jonathan. When are you going to have a proper dialogue instead of waffling? Wait for it. Hulk Hogan would smash Big Daddy into small little pieces and feed him to the dogs. Right. You're banned. <laughs> if you, I don't want lunatics listening. Big Daddy, would Daddy splat him? Big Daddy killed a man. No, he didn't. The man had a heart condition. Okay, but, Big but Daddy still, never forgave himself. I know. Poor Big Daddy. Big Daddy was the gentle giant, whereas Hulk Hogan was just a plum. And let's talk about Papa Shango. Oh, yeah. Neil and Royston. Papa Shango also set his opponent's feet on fire more than once. Whoa! Now, that, let, right, that has got to be against the rules. That is definitely <laughs> against the rules. So there we go. Wrestling Dealey, you was... strike me as the sort that would um, love a little bit of uh, American wrestling. What's your name? Dealey? Oh, sorry, you're there. Well, my nan used to love Big Daddy in the 80s. Yep. And you're going back to, to the, the older lady saying how much they loved him. Do you know what? My nan used to sit there every single Saturday afternoon watching this. Wasn't really for me. Wasn't really for me personally, but I used to get into it every now and again, you know? I'm a football man. I'm oh. a real man. OK, well, listen, we've got a caller on line one. Good morning, line one. Easy, easy, <laughs> easy, 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 easy. Easy, 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 easy. Thanks very much for calling line one. Uh, there we go, Justin. That was nice, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Put that in the pod as well. It's, yeah. I think the whole podcast this week is just me and Catherine and line one chanting. Mm-hmm. That's what it's going to be. You've taken Big Daddy to the streets. I have, and there's more chanting to come. Um, yeah, I've been asking people for their memories of Shirley Crabtree Jr., yep. better known as Big Daddy. Um, I've been trying to get people to do the famous chants on the way to work this morning. Mm-hmm. Boss, take a listen. Here's what happened. <laughs> Taking it to the streets with J Dog. Madam, you saw Big Daddy live. What was he like? Big. Agnes, how are you today? Fine, thank you. We're taking Big Daddy to the streets. Oh. We're, we're getting his name back on the radio. Now, what's your memories of watching the big man himself? With giant haystacks. <laughs> I remember them two fighting, uh, wrestling. When the kids were small, I was only about in my 20s. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And he You're used... smiling up straight away, aren't you? Yeah, no, I loved him. I loved the two of them. Uh, and Ian's been trying to do the chant this morning. Just in 10 seconds, can you give us the Big Daddy chant? Easy, easy. Wonderful. <laughs> Madam, a big, big daddy fan in the house. What did he mean to you when you were growing up? Um, it was a Saturday afternoon watching wrestling with my granddad. Yes. And just lastly, give us the chant. How did it used to go? Easy, easy. Great big fat bloke. Lovely. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you very much. Take care. Okay. I think the last bit may have been improvised slightly. I don't no, remember the great no. big fat bloke. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it was just out there this morning. People on the way to work, and as soon as you mentioned Big Daddy, people oh. were smiling. People wanted to do the chant. That they didn't mind looking stupid no. in public. They were well up for it. But you say people really? Mm. We used the wrong jingle there, didn't we? That was the lady's perspective. <laughs> yes. uh, what's interesting is in the kids don't realise this, right? And uh, this is why you've got your your, your athletes, your, your Etienne. Stotts, your, 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 your Greg Rutherfords. Your Paula Radcliffe. Your Paula Radcliffe. So mm. we're all super thin, super lithe, muscular, toned bodies. No, mm. no, 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 no. They put people off sports. In the 70s, yeah. the best fighter in the world was Big Daddy. Yep. The strongest man in the world was Jeff Capes. Yep. Fat blokes. Well, it's funny you should say that because... Um, I Inspiration. May, I may get a slap for saying this. Uh, Steve, if you're listening, I do apologise, oh. but uh, Luton Town centre-half, a certain Steve McNaughty, a fantastic football player... 
let's just say he's rather large and he's making it sexy. Do it they, is sexy to be big. Do they call him Naughty McNaughty? No, they, they don't. Sh- they should do. They call him Macca, and trust me, if you met him face to face, you would not say a bad word against him. Why do they call him Macca? Because he always puts his thumbs up and plays bass guitar or because he goes to McDonald's? <laughs> what is it? Uh, I think, <laughs> Steve, I'm sorry, probably because um, he goes to McDonald's. It, Lut- Luton fans, call him Naughty McNaughty. You'll like that. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a, it makes him a bit dangerous, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Say, say it from the stands and then run. All right, yeah, fine. Thank you, Justin. He's a Naughty McNaughty. I've never thought of that before. I bet he's a bit naughty as well. You know, within the, the confines of the law, of course. I'm not saying he's, you know. But that's a good name. Naughty McNaughty. I'd like that. If I... Excellent name. Thank you, mate. Graham's on the line. Good morning, Graham. Good morning, Ian. What would you like to say to us? Uh, I heard you mention Mick McManus earlier. That's correct, yeah. Um, in the 1960s, he was doing some stunt work on the Avengers television series. Was he? He was. And Honor Blackman knocked him out, for real. W- what? Yeah. Flip it, eh? Hey, that reminds me. I heard the uh, Kinky Boots song mm-hmm. the other day. It's a good song, yeah, isn't it? I've got that somewhere. On yeah, the there's a really. There's. I was listening to it, thinking, "Oh, this is a good song." Can you find it, Kells? Kinky Boots. Yeah. Right. Because there's a there's a line in it where you go, "Oh, that's that's su- uh, sucks the fun out of this song." Do you know the line I'm thinking of, Kath? Um, there's a line in it. It's all a little bit. Well, it's a little bit of harmless fun. now, isn't it? And then there's a line that Patrick McNee sings, right? And you go... I was listening in the car and went, oh, that really has ruined my enjoyment of uh, of this song. It's it's taken it to a whole new... Uh, See, when whole... he starts th- listing the people who work in Kinky Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, so. that's, that's it. It's a very specific list that's wrong on just so many levels. She's got it. Have you got it? Yeah. Should we, should we, should we, l- two seconds. One, two. Yeah, there you go. Right, let's have a listen to this. See if you can spot... Stay there, uh, Graham. Spot the line that... Um, wait, have a listen. Everybody's going for those kinky boots, kinky boots. Kinky boots, it's a manly kind of fashion that you borrowed from the brutes. Borrowed from the brutes. Kinky boots, fashion magazine say wear em. And you rush to obey like the women in the hair of Full length, half length, fully fashion calf length Brown boots, black boots, patent leather jack boots Low boots, high boots, lovely lanky thigh boots We all dig those boots Everybody's crazy for those kinky boots, kinky boots Kinky boots And whether you're in evening dress or bathing suits You wear boots, boots, a kinky boots There are 20 million women wearing kinky boots, kinky boots. Puss in boots, footwear manufacturers are gathering the fruits. Gathering the fruits. Kinky boots, advertising men say try them. And you all run amok like a flock of sheep to buy them. Sweet girls, street girls, frumpy little beach girls. Square girls, cool girls, sexy little school girls. Oh. Sexy, I can't even say the sentence. No, don't. Little schoolgirls. Ah. Graham. It was the 60s. Well, I know, but hang on a minute. That was Savile's. No, no, Savile was never... That's been the defence of some of these other uh, deviants that have uh, now been locked up, hopefully. Well, a lot's changed in 50 years. Sexy little schoolgirls. Anyway, Graham, thanks for that. No problem with Cheers, there we go. Uh, Yeah, it's unpleasant, isn't it? I've got a boastful text from Billy. Go on, Billy. Hi, Ian. I went to see Big Daddy on my 10th birthday at Weymouth Pavilion. Was it easy? He sung Happy Birthday to me and gave oh. me a signed photo, which I still have. Hey, flip it, heck. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, S-A-R. S-A-R. No, S-A-R-A. What's that? Spontaneous round of applause. Oh, yeah. S-A-R is something completely different. That's SARS. Yeah, it's not to be applauded. Well, uh, that, that's... Uh, I feel we have to just finish this. Little artists. They all did those. Everybody's rushing for those Russian boots. Russian boots. Kinky boots. Cover, Cover up the slender little, little tender, tender boots. With, With kinky, kinky slinky. slinky. Leather is so kinky. Come and get those kinky boots. Boots. Kinky boots. Tomorrow, we're not going to play songs that uh, have completely inappropriate sexual references nowadays, but I think we should just play songs by people who can't sing. Can we do Excellent. that? Excellent. Sandy Shaw. Uh, yeah. Uh, Arthur Mallard. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, we'll play songs uh, from people that, that can't sing. And the whole hour could be Bob Dylan. I think, like, like I think the in, in oh, the interest no, of balance, guys, yeah? 
We've got to get this one last text in. Let's have it. From um, from Johnny Milk Keynes. Yep. Big Daddy was not and never good. He showboated. He was not and never good? I beg your pudding. He showboated as his brother was the referee and in charge. Oh. Oh, mate, The best listen. tag team was Mick McManus and Steve Logan. Oh, I can't argue with that. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M25 anti-clockwise, there's two lanes closed between Junction 13 for Staines and 12 for the M3 because of an accident. That's causing queues at the moment to Junction 15 for the M4. In High Wycombe, the A404 northbound's queuing towards the High Wycombe Handycross roundabout. And in Beaconsfield on Amersham Road, it's looking very heavy at the moment on the speed sensors between Ledborough Lane and the A40 London Road. In Borehamwood on the Barnet Bypass, it's queuing between the Stirling Corner and the Mill Hill Circus. And also on the A405 North Orbital Road, it's looking very busy around the M25 Junction 21A roundabout. In Dunstable, the A5 High Street North still queuing because of the traffic light failure at the Houghton Parade. There's no reports of any problems at the moment on the train. Samantha Braff, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Samantha. Hey, don't forget, if you go to iTunes or the Three Counties website, you can download the Best of podcast. It'll be quiet this week, but last week's was a corker. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Catherine. We'll be back tomorrow at six. Until then, from us, ta-ta. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to the JBS Show. I'm Jonathan Vernon Smith. It's Tuesday. It's nine o'clock and on today's big phone-in. Do you get a good or bad service from your doctor?